Good afternoon everybody. I was about to say it's a little bit of an overcast day here but it's just burst into glorious sunshine so I'm no doubt horribly overexposed but uh, welcome, thank you for tuning in and thank you to those of you who've been hovering around since about half past one wondering what on earth we're up to while we're waiting for some flying to start. Nothing flying yet, expecting our first item Rich Goodwin in about 20 minutes time. We're a little bit unsure about how the rest of the day is going to pan out so I'll be honest the, the weather being what it is and um, lots of changes uh, heading our way so we'll just take it as it comes shall we. Um, it's two o'clock now got 20 minutes to go figured we'd get the stream at least started and say a few welcomes to people in the chat if you are watching uh, I mean, everybody's watching on YouTube today um, do join the chat it's a lovely way of uh, joining in a conversation with like-minded enthusiasts and uh, yeah giving us some feedback throwing some questions our way We've got Ben Danelstad over my shoulder Mike Stanway if you've got questions for the guys running the show here you can throw them our way and perhaps if we have a quiet period I might get to that I'm afraid um, we can throw those questions to them and we can throw some answers back to you let's take a look at the chat so yeah uh, the cancellations we we know about are battle bit memorial flight sadly i think the weather being weather between here and coningsby being what it is that wasn't going to be terribly likely and um, p47 also cancelled and um, adam run me through a few others Aerosparks have also cancelled. Team Raven, we, we were hoping might fill a gap. Team Raven sadly can't join us uh, due to weather as well. Um, oh yeah, Chinook sadly uh, unserviceable, so not able to join us as well. Um, Reds are on the airfield over there, so we've got to fingers crossed for those guys. Um, and Catalina might just see uh, appear at some point here. I've got Adrian stood next to me and I can give him a he's, he's within kicking distance actually so I can give him a kick in the shins if we do see the Catalina just on its way down to Duxford after some uh, maintenance overnight I think. I think the guys have been pulling their stops out to get the aircraft down after some uh, work needed doing. Uh, chat's not loaded. There we go. Ah, oh, hello from New Zealand, says Luke. 1am on the Friday morning. I mean, fair play. I was up at a similar time last night, but that's a different story. And working, I should say. Um, but yeah, hats off to you for joining us at such an early stage. No, we're expecting... Uh, Max saying no red arrows. Yeah, we're... Uh, so a couple of people saying red's cancelled. I don't know that that's the case. The last, last update... Yeah, you may be confusing with Guernsey because I think they are cancelled for Guernsey sadly um, but the last I heard which was only moments ago was that we are hoping to see the Red Arrows this afternoon um, and lots of uh, yeah it's lovely to see so many people joining the chat and lovely to see Gary a YouTube member saying thanks for the update Ben and um, and Ben was doing my job for me and explaining to you why we weren't seeing a, a stream at half past one as we'd hoped to. As I say, we, the flying start being moved back to 20 past meant that the stream started later and I'm sorry I didn't get that message out there. Um, Gary Palmer saying, hi Plains TV, hope you're doing well. I went to Bournemouth Air Show on Saturday and I enjoyed the show. I'm looking forward to Jersey Air Show. It looks good. Hope the weather's okay for the show. And it is the weather, as ever, isn't it, at air shows. That's the main concern for us. Jersey is often, you know, we've got this three-hour window on a Thursday afternoon where we need all the, uh, everything to, to work out for us. And it can just catch us out sometimes. It's a lovely day here, I should say. It's fairly mild. Bit of a breeze. The odd small spell of rain been through the this morning um, but it's weather between here and other places that's really uh, causing that mischief for very many of those displays. I can see Ben Donnell's just popped his headset on so I'll probably pipe down for a little while and um, hope and perhaps he'll have an update for us and um, Ben Donnell providing Escher commentary throughout the flying this afternoon and um, so I'll maybe hand over well, I'll, I'll at least disappear for a little while anyway, and you can stare at the wonderful sight of the castle over there and the uh, setting we have here in Jersey. It's a lovely day in its way. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see if uh, Ben's got any updates for us, and I'll, I'll pop in from time to time through the day.
microphones from here. That's, that, that, was, that was me. I switched the pants off and it was over the phone. Right, okay, so, so my, that, was, that was me. I so that the last one was you. Okay. Mm. Um, mm. Right, okay, fine. Um, but the other issue we have is. Going with the display, yep. see if there's any guidance I can take on the It's a lovely sight isn't it the Catalina there you get an idea of the view we have of the airport uh, from here and um, behind those trees uh, so Catalina arriving that's a, a lovely sight for some members of the team here who are uh, hitching a lift to a next event um, so wonderful to have the Catalina and I should say you know what I, what I've ran through earlier some of the aircraft we're sadly not going to be able to see today uh, we are going to see uh, Catalina uh, obviously hopefully it certainly made it to the island and we're also we have the lovely French trio or foursome I suppose the two Flamont the Corsair 
and the Bronco, all on the island, validated yesterday, and we're very much looking forward to seeing them. And then the Marchetti as well. Marchetti? You always, you always say Marchetti. And it is Marchetti, Adam. Yeah, thank you for correcting me. And so nice display from Paul. Uh, we're expecting as well, and of course the Red Arrows. People saying they're cancelled in the chat. They are cancelled for Guernsey, as far as I know. They are still hoping to join us here at Jersey. I will just take another look at the chart. Forgive me, gl chat, glancing down. Nice to see Falcon Drift there. Uh, lots of people talking about the Queen, which I won't. Yes, and Connor saying you can see the Catalina. Yeah, sight for sore eyes, hey. And yeah, of course, uh, yeah, P47 was due to fly today, uh, Joey. Sadly, the P47 has has scrubbed, not able to get here due to the weather. Well, a tricky job to get down here. Um, what else did I see? Oh, it was Mac asking, Mac Cat Lady, nice username asking about uh, where the Catalina is based. Yeah, a, a long-term resident of uh, Duxford, so a nice aeroplane to be able to see if you have to pay the airfield a visit, the museum a visit. Yeah, I, uh, I'm reading all... It's so, so lovely, the, <laughs> the chat here. It can be very useful. I mean, we're stood next to the airshow director here, so hopefully we get a little knock, tap on the shoulder, an explanation of what is and isn't happening but uh, yes yeah, some very well informed people in the chat so it's quite useful actually as well seeing what uh, is being put out elsewhere I can hear Ben chatting away I think we'll hand over to Esher commentator Ben who's joined by Murray from the uh, radio station here as well let's hear them Adam And a uh, welcome to the team from Planes TV, who've once again come over to provide live visual coverage of the event to uh, back up the radio coverage here on Liberation Radio. And if you're watching on Planes TV, then a very warm welcome to you. Hope you're having a nice day wherever you might be. And uh, if you want to tune in to the Planes TV live stream, then search for Planes TV on YouTube and that is where you will find it. As for the flying program, well, I won't be needing quite as many of the notes that I've brought with me. <laughs> He's brought two, I... <laughs> two suitcases of notes here. <laughs> it's not far off, but uh, unfortunately, we have had it confirmed that the P 51 Mustang from the Rolls Royce Heritage flight is not going to be able to join us in the display today. It was going to be transiting down from East Midlands Airport near Derby, and it won't surprise any of you, I'm sure, to find out the reason why, which is the weather between here and there is not suitable. For the Mustang to transit so very very sorry about that it does mean that we're potentially looking at a bit of a gap of possibly around 40 minutes between the two Flamands and the Royal Air Force aerobatic team the Red Arrows in closing the show but of course there might be the possibility of tightening things up a little we still await further news on that from the flying display director all right. Well, we'll just keep we'll just keep that information uh, as close as we can, and we'll keep you up to date as much as we can on things as they happen. Do you know? Every time I see one of those those seagulls struggling up into the air, and at the corner of my eye, I think it might be a plane. <laughs> You've had that mistake many a time. Uh, I'm sure I have. Yes, and uh, I can't say I know anything about different breeds of seagull like I do different marks of Spitfire. So. My comments on those might be a little limited, but uh, we'll do our best to talk you through whatever we are going to see this afternoon, whenever we're going to see it. At the moment, still scheduled for a 20 past two start time. Good out. That's what we're looking forward to. We're looking forward to seeing some planes in the sky, and we're looking forward to hearing Ben's words of wisdom <laughs> and the odd tune from here and then, and also from you down on the avenue as well. Mel is out on the avenue at the moment, and she's catching up with people left, right, and centre, and we'll get some of their messages as well. And if you've got messages, then uh, our Facebook Liberation Radio's uh, Facebook page, uh, you can message us. You can just get in touch with us via that or on our Twitter page, and we'll make sure those dedications get out to you as quickly as possible. Also, the email is on air at liberationradio.co.uk.
so we are expecting Rich Goodwin to be our first act in just five minutes time so Rich Goodwin yes do you think that's news to you is it <laughs> uh, certainly what uh, Ben told me just a little while ago so yeah Rich Goodwin just playing in four minutes we're hoping that's the plan um, so beautiful blue sky at the moment so it's a breezy old time bit of a challenging uh, situation for takeoff and landing in a pits I would think but nothing he's not uh, familiar with um, yeah so it could be a really nice display we'll have to get Adam out on camera and Adrian's lined up as well um, I did want to say that we we've had a busy spell of it you'll if you're familiar with our YouTube streams we were over at Bournemouth over the weekend I was trying to get my paperwork done ready for Ostrava in a week's time um, didn't quite finish that paperwork so I'll be working on that this evening uh, and this weekend we'll be at Duxford of course so expecting to see 22 Spitfires there and a good hand good bundle of hurricanes as well for the Battle of Britain air show and that stream will go out over on the watch.planestv.com service and one of the displays we are very much looking forward to seeing are the Czech helicopters the hip and hind uh, the first time I believe the Czech Air Force has been represented at Oxford since the Second World War so that's an, a, a really quite important appearance um, so yes join us on the um, on-demand streaming service for the Duxford show over on Saturday and Sunday but for the time being across our fingers that we see a uh, smoking pit in the distance in the very near future I'll just check in with the chat see see what's going on uh, Thunderbolt flying around the showers interesting Mark interesting um, gutted not to be there in person yeah there is something about being at uh, a show in person isn't that isn't there that um, um, that you just can't get from a uh, live broadcast but um, and there's meant to be a flying spit today uh, yeah we're expecting Mustang from the Royal Heritage flight which was cancelled um, I don't it's, it's a bit cancelled as well yes so we've been a little bit decimated but we are expecting some, a good amount of flying this afternoon so do stick with us and yeah the Reds p pulling in lots of effort the swapping aircraft Oh, lovely to hear Falcon says that the Hip and Hind, I was just mentioning uh, that it will be appearing at Duxford over the weekend, have arrived at Duxford. So that's going to be, I suppose it's not that early actually, is it? Thursday now, and it's a fair old journey actually, so don't blame them getting there a little bit early. Enjoy the sights of Cambridge, perhaps. All right, we'll hand over to Ben now, who's uh, nattering away. <laughs> His muscle biplane, a very highly modified variation on the theme of the basic pit special, which incredibly is a design that dates back to 1944. That's when Curtis Pitts, an American engineer and aerobatic pilot, came up with his idea for a lightweight, small, high power to weight ratio aerobatic biplane. That was an impressive enough performer when you read accounts of it appearing at early post-war air displays, particularly in Europe, where nothing of its like had been seen before. But what's happened over the years is that the basic design has been by various people, including the aircraft manufacturers down the years, which have transferred through companies such as Kristen and Aerotech, for example, as well as many home builders, this has resulted in many highly modified variants appearing. And it's one of those that we're going to start the display with. It's very recognizably, for those of you who know the pit special design, a pit special, but in many other ways, it is totally different from not just that 1944 original, but many of the standard pits that have appeared over the years since. Are we gonna get a special sound as it goes past? Because you said muscle. We are going to get a very special sound indeed. This aircraft has a highly tuned engine. It has a special aerobatic propeller as well. And we're beginning to hear that noise now as he runs in to start the 2022 Jersey International Air Display flying display on the knife edge, waggling his wings as he comes past us. It's Rich Goodwin with the muscle biplane. He's throwing that around, isn't he? He certainly is. Rich built this aircraft himself by hand over a four-year period. He had a pit special that he'd previously acquired and modified. This one's been built up on the basis of that. 
but with the prospect of still more performance being afforded in the future by the addition of small jet engines, <laughs> which he's hoping to gain approval for. So, yes, this is, this is the man who's useful with the spanner as well, though, and that makes it quite, quite, quite hefty. Um, just, just seeing vapours coming out of the back there, uh, which uh, we, we do see from display aircraft. We do. Yes, indeed, this is... Uh, nowadays, it used to be diesel oil, but it's nowadays an environmentally friendly smoke oil blend that is pumped into the engine exhaust, and that is what causes this magnificent smoke trail. Talking about this aircraft being uprated, it has a six-cylinder, 8.5-litre Lycoming IO540 engine. That's a fair bit of power, isn't it, really, when you think about it? It certainly is, yes, and combined with the fact that the aircraft has had its airframe very highly modified, this is a large part of as well as Richard's own ability of course, of what enables to put on such a brilliant performance. That is quite fantastic. It was a really, really enjoyable uh, experience seeing that coming across in front of us, and particularly at the moment because we have got bright sunshine. It's a bit blustery up there, but this doesn't seem to be affecting this display. Now, although, in spite of the fact that he has so much power at his disposal, this is, as I say, a very light aeroplane, and Rich, despite all of this, will still be having to adjust his display because of the wind. Don't forget, it's much worse for him up there than it is for us even down here, despite how much we're being buffeted around. <laughs> so he is having to make those adjustments all the way through his display to ensure the sort of safe, precise positioning that we look for. I was actually reading as it flies past me. Wonderful roaring sound. Uh, it's really throaty. And, and right here in front of us uh, as we face out looking towards Elizabeth Castle um, and now heading towards St Urban. Uh, I was reading that the first Loop de Loop, uh, which was by a Frenchman, I believe, was in 1913, which was... It was. Which, uh, see, I'm full of information, mate, but it was only two days ago, which was his anniversary, so there we go. Ah, was it indeed? This yeah. must have been Adolphe Pegou. Pegou, that was in it. In a Blériot. Yes. Yes, indeed. I have seen a Blériot looped. And it looks quite a hair-raising experience. <laughs> I, I have never been in a plane and done a loop, and I have no intention of doing so. I shall <laughs> leave it to the experts. So, uh, Rich is uh, putting on a nice display for us here today. He certainly is. He is someone who's come into the aerobatic display world via competition aerobatic flying. He became a member of the British Aerobatic Association, but already he was an extremely seasoned RAF frontline pilot on the Tornado GR1 Strike Air. Aircraft. Nowadays he flies for the airlines. He comes from a flying background, incidentally, because his now late father, Ken Goodwin, was renowned as being one of the very best RAF display pilots of his generation with the Hawker Hunter and the English Electric Lightning. You might think that Rich has a bit of Harrier background watching this manoeuvre, being able to hover, but uh, not so. This is the incredible power to weight ratio of the pits coming into play. And I should think he probably was virtually at zero forward airspeed there, given the strength of the wind that we're talking about. I was just about to ask. So basically, he was he was facing it into the wind and holding it. Yes, nose high, nose high, and therefore that sort of angle of attack. I should I should think the forward speed was pretty minimal there, given the strength of the headwind. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's a it hovering is. skill in a biplane. Yes, yes, indeed. But that's what I'm talking about. That's the sort of capability that's brought to bear by this aircraft having very lightweight, a very powerful engine, and of course being very manoeuvrable, having very responsive flight controls. The standard undercarriage was removed as part of the modification programme. The engine mount was modified so that the undercarriage rear legs could be. Um, made from uh, titanium and titanium sprung. The engine cowling is a different shape, more aer aerodynamic. It reduces weight and drag. And compared with the standard pit special, also the rudder is a different shape. It helps give Rich much more powerful yaw control, and that comes in very handy during this display as well. Now, one of the most visible aspects of these so-called blade wings Another difference to the basic pit special design, these help afford the fabulous roll rate that this aircraft has. If good enough on the ordinary pits, it's even better on this one. 
What sort of speed could we expect from, from a, an aeroplane like this? Because it does seem to move around. Uh, maximum speed 210 miles an hour, stalling speed of 55 miles an hour, but as we saw, Rich is able just to hang it on the prop. And in those sort of circumstances there, the uh, as we saw there, into that heavy headwind, hanging it on the propeller at quite high power. From what I can see of it, this is a single seater. This aircraft is, but it's based on the two-seat version of right. the pits. Right. Uh, there are single and two-seat pit specials. This is an S2S model, officially, which should mean it's a two-seater. But I think this one is a single-seater, yes. Yeah, uh, just in case you were fancying a little ride somewhere, that's not the plane to do it in. Uh, so uh, he's up high at the moment. It's been a, it's been a great flight. Uh, I've seen him uh, going to those almost stall positions when he goes directly up and then then falls back down there. Little plume. I'm not sure if that's his goodbye plume of vapour. Not yet. Oh, not yet. We're not finished. What he's done here is he's uh, just gained height briefly to uh, take a moment out of the display just to cool the engine down before, as we see, diving in towards us at high power. Using that energy he's built up to pull up around the display centre point for what he calls his tower of power, rolling and rolling and rolling into the blue, absolutely sensational. This aircraft has absolutely penetrating vertical performance and that is really one of his signature manoeuvres in this display. This display incidentally sponsored by the Sabio Group, very active in the digital world and they sponsor Rich because they say they want to unearth the next generation of aviators, engineers, encouraging people through taking up careers in aviation, particularly having studied the STEM subject, science, technology, engineering and maths. All about getting that next generation involved in flying in general and in this case in aerobatic flying in particular. Uh, it's worth a big wave to Rich that goes by. Now, you talk to a lot of pilots and you talk to the pilots in all the shows. Do they really see people waving? They certainly can, yes. It depends to some extent on the uh, uh, type of display they're flying as to how much notice they take of it. Yeah. If, uh, in the past, we've seen the wing walkers here. Now, there's an act where both pilots and wing walker can definitely see the ground. Rich, obviously, is performing some very, very high-energy manoeuvres here. So, of course, he's having to take into account his positioning in relation to the display line that he has to uphold. But he can absolutely see everyone's appreciation, particularly when he comes in to finish his display with his final low pass. Tremendous. We're looking forward to that very shortly. Uh, Kirsty, if you're Kirsty Mosley and son or grandson, if you're listening to us right at the moment, uh, then uh, we love the photo you sent in of your little red arrow. Very nice. I think it's also worth uh, noting that we've got bright sunshine at the moment and I think that, that we should make the most of it whilst we've got it. Very possibly, though who knows? <laughs> who who knows? knows? The weather may surprise us. Uh, this is an absolutely fantastic display I think Rich puts on. A combination of the more traditional aerobatic figures, albeit in very high octane form, with complicated gyroscopic type figures. It really is a display like no other on the circuit. And here he is back on the knife edge. This is that baby. <laughs> Look there at that modified wing shape as uh, it pulls the aircraft up towards Elizabeth Castle. From where we're sitting right at this moment, that's almost directly into it the sun. It is almost directly into the sun, wow. yes. By the sound of it, he's hovering again, though we can't actually see. Just above the level. Just, just see him. Hovering with the smoke coming out the back. I guess that was directly into the sun from my point of view. It's co commentator's nightmare, that is, yes, Ben, but... Um, 
there's his final wing rock to say farewell. What a way to start our 2022 Jersey International Air Display. Rich Goodwin with his muscle biplane. Tremendous. We've really enjoyed that very much indeed. More coming here. It's Liberation Radio Live. If you're listening to us, if you're watching us, send us a message by whichever means. Liberation Radio on social media is usually very good. And we'll say hello to you. Tell us if you're out there in the crowd as well. We'd like to have your dedications. you've just joined us thanks for tuning in my name's Ian I run Plains TV you're hearing Ben and uh, Murray commentate through the show I thought I'd just say hello and uh, check in with what's going in on, the, on in the chat I see someone mentioning the OV10 taking off and then someone mentioning mentioning Tony De Bruin different um, Bronco actually different Bronco um, yeah due in six minutes uh, says Connor so this is a French Bronco really nice display as is Tony's I should say but yeah nice to see a different aircraft uh, for a change not that we see enough of Tony's Bronco of course Mark saying always nice Let me make sure you've got my mic properly <laughs> that's very fitting of me while I'm trying to sort out my audio levels to make sure you can hear me Mark saying always nice when the noise drowns out the con constant yapping from the commentators well I'm sure the guys are doing their best and, and, and Ben Ben will of course always try to give you a, uh, a moment to enjoy the, the rasping sound of the pits or, uh, or whatever the aircraft is that we're listening to and Malcolm and Mark saying hi Ian hello Mark hello back at you I would hop on camera and wave at you too, Mark, but I'm behind the desk today making sure the uh, show goes off smoothly. Hello from Brazil, says Jose. Thank you very much for tuning in. This be a bit earlier in the morning. Gosh, where are we now? Oh, not too bad, maybe. Uh, I saw someone a moment ago in from New Zealand. It's got to be passing, what, half past one or something? Yeah, hats off to them, but lovely to see people coming in from further afield and joining the live stream. If you aren't familiar with the UK air show circuit and you're enjoying this, do join us again over the weekend for the Duxford Live broadcast. Ah, Joe, very fittingly saying we don't get enough air shows here in Oz. Always great to see the Plains TV live stream. So I'm glad to provide that entertainment. It's uh, it's funny you mention that because I'd like to come out to New Zealand and I'd like to do Avalon as well in Australia but uh, I suppose it's the grass is always greener isn't it but I'm glad to hear you're enjoying the live broadcast today Joe. Hello Chris thank you for tuning in and uh, joining us to look after the chat. I can hear Murray and Ben chatting again so I'll hand you back over to them. But yes thank you very much for tuning in as I say we had a few cancellations but looking forward to a fairly action-packed day I think let's hear what Ben and Murray have to say special thanks to the organizers of the show for looking after us during the visit and Liberation Radio keep up the great music we'll do our best And as we face out looking at Elizabeth Castle in front of us, and if you look to your left very shortly, and just making its way, we expect to see the Bronco. We do indeed expect to see the North American OV-10B Bronco, a great friend of the Jersey International Air Display, this particular aircraft, which comes to us from the Musée Européen de l'Aviation de Chasse at Montélimar in France. I think this aircraft has probably been to more Jersey International Air Displays since the show became the International Air Display 25 years ago now, in 1997, than any other aeroplane. I think it's been here virtually every year since then. 
and every so often the aircraft takes on a bit of a new look. A few years back it was repainted from its previous German Luftwaffe colours into those of the US Marine Corps at the time of the first Gulf War in 1991 and I gather that they just made a bit of an addition to this colour scheme last week because last weekend there was an air show at Cambrai Nian in France well Cambrai is the place in France where the French Air Force's first member squadron of the NATO Tiger Association was established back in 1961 that's the organisation that brings together aircraft from squadrons across the NATO alliance that have Tigers or now also other forms of Big Cat in their emblem as the Bronco makes its first fly past well to mark the Tiger Squadron Association of Cambrai and also to indicate the fact that Montelimar where this aircraft is based is known for its production of nougat they've put some special artwork on the tail <laughs> of this aeroplane showing a tiger delivering some of that confectionery very very good of them to do that sorry that was rather a long story no, but there was, was but, a, uh, when it gets a bit way close, of explaining it when it gets a bit closer we'll we'll check out that um I, I suspect that what we have to do is is look at this and go that doesn't look as if you were drawing a basic aeroplane. No, but that's a very good way of putting it. This aircraft was designed to meet an incredibly specific set of requirements on the part of the US military in the early 1960s. They were looking for a light armed reconnaissance aircraft for use not just by the US Air Force, but also by the US Navy and Marine Corps and US Army. And the set of requirements that had included that it had to have two crew members, it had to be capable of withstanding between plus eight and minus three G, so this had to be a very strong and very agile aeroplane. It had to have the ability to fly off aircraft carriers, have a top speed of 350 miles an hour, and carry over 2,400 pounds of cargo, or six paratroops, or stretcher cases, and so on and so forth. So yes, you're right, no ordinary aircraft design. I also find it quite interesting that the wingtips don't look like wingtips, they look very square and cut. They are indeed, yes, it's one of the attributes that gives this aircraft such excellent manoeuvrability and as we saw there, it is fully aerobatic, which given the design you might not necessarily expect, but given the role you perhaps would. I do like the, the idea that you come up with a spec of all the things it needs to do and then somewhere some engineer has to sit down and come <laughs> up with something and that's what they come up with and we're very delighted they did too because as you say it's not a stranger to this air show it's been many times indeed it has this was an aircraft type that entered service in time for heavy involvement in the vietnam war starting off with the u.s marine corps they flew them in Vietnam on observation and forward air control duties supporting ground forces. The US Air Force also used them in Vietnam as forward air controllers. In that theatre they would direct strikes by fast jet attack aircraft, by the AC-47 spooky gunship versions of the Dakota and by ground artillery. They could also pack a fair punch themselves with their loads of high explosive rockets and their 7.62 millimeter onboard machine guns. Just demonstrating a fantastic maneuverability on that roll. Just looks completely within its comfort zone. Oh, it definitely is. Yes, this is a highly agile aircraft. Again, for that sort of the sort of low level missions these aircraft were performing in Vietnam, these attributes were all important as was the strength of the machine and there were some very notable acts of heroism by Bronco pilots in the Southeast Asia theatre. A US Air Force Bronco pilot named Captain Steve Bennett was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honour for his sacrifice in Vietnam. He was on a fire control mission helping out some US Navy ships when he was diverted to go to the aid of some US troops that were being attacked by North Vietnamese infantry. The Bronco was hit by an SA-7 surface-to-air missile and Bennett had to ditch it. Now that, given the configuration of the Bronco with a high wing, as we see here, was not a safe option, but it was the only thing he was able to do. 
the Ford Air Controller from the US Marine Corps, who was in the back seat of the aeroplane, lost his life. Uh, sorry, well, he survived, but Bennett lost his life, and it was for that that he was awarded the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor. That, that kind of story just gives me goosebumps. It really does. Um, I know. I know there. There, there was use of this aircraft in Desert Storm. Uh, there was, yes. And of course, we're talking about more than uh, 20 years on from the initial combat employment of the Bronco. 81 Broncos have been lost in Vietnam, mostly US Air Force ones. Perhaps it was for those reasons the US Air Force chose not to deploy its Broncos to Desert Storm in 1991. The Marines did. By then, the aircraft had been considerably upgraded with weather and night vision systems for the crew, also more powerful engines, but the thing was that the Bronco by that point was just becoming too vulnerable for use in modern combat theatres. Yeah. Well, it makes a great display, uh, as always. We're always delighted to see the Bronco, and it's, it is actually enjoying, I don't know, I hope not the best of the weather today, because we hope it just continues like this, because it would be really comfortable if it did, but it's enjoying beautiful bright sunshine as it pans itself round right in front of Elizabeth Castle and then tilts away towards Nuamo. Now I say that the aircraft was becoming rather outmoded by the time of Desert Storm. In fact, in much more recent years, of course, aircraft optimised for this sort of role, light attack, counterinsurgency, forward air control, have really come back into vogue because some people feel that in modern armed forces you don't need very high-end combat aircraft like F-22s or F-35s to perform those roles. What you need is a slower, perhaps on ground, less capable but still very agile, tough, survivable airframe to perform those tasks. And of course, the cheaper to operate the flying out. And so it was that two Broncos, much modernised, were evaluated for use in Afghanistan and they were deployed there in 2016 and by all accounts performed excellently, probably supporting special forces out there. But the decision was taken not to go on with the procurement of the Bronco instead. There are more modern types like the Embraer Super Tucano and the Beechcraft 86, but basically it's the same role. Yeah, great utility aircraft really. Fantastic utility aircraft. This one is ex-West German Luftwaffe, delivered in the late 1960s as a target tug. And this version is distinguished from the sort of Broncos that the US military operated by one thing in particular, namely the big glass dome on the rear fuselage in place of the cargo door. And they were also fitted with an auxiliary jet engine for extra power. Wow. Well, it's on its last pass now. It's doing a, a slow fly pass to say goodbye as it makes its way. So give them a big wave. They'll enjoy that. Nice big wave on the slow pass as it heads back. Heading back to where? Heading back to the airport here. It's landing down here, is it? It certainly is, yes. Jean-Luc Berry flying the Bronco for us today. And our grateful thanks to the Musée Européen de l'Aviation de Chasse in Montélimar for bringing this aircraft back year after year, putting on brilliant displays with it. Doesn't look as though this one's quite over yet, actually. Oh, last, last pass, but he's changed his mind. That's fine. The museum's actually celebrating its 35th anniversary this year. This aircraft is its flying ambassador, and it's given displays on behalf of the museum all over Europe, even as far afield as Marrakesh on at least one occasion. Wow. I don't think he wants to leave the arena, quite frankly. I think, I think Jean-Luc is enjoying himself way too much. We're going to get a look at the underside. Those engines, incidentally, a pair of Garrett T76 turboprop, 715 shaft horsepower each. And this is going to be his final pass, so now your final chance to say goodbye. A wonderful performance from Jean-Luc Berry with the OV-10B Bronco. So the Bronco in the foreground and Condor in the background. And there aren't too many types, even much more modern designs than this one, that are able to perform a virtually 90 degree to 90 degree wing rock. Yeah. 
like that. A fantastic machine. Terrific also to be able to hear air traffic control in the background from where we are and, and, and almost get the pilot's commentary as he's saying goodbye and that's it. I'm going to do my final bit before heading back. So uh, we're, we're in a very privileged position up here on the commentary box. It's Liberation Radio. We're live on air. We've got so many messages to get through. We're going to try and get through some. A shout out to Leo and Harvey and Oscar who are watching the display at the moment. Hello, Leo, Harvey and Oscar. And uh, thank you to Harley, who got in touch with us to give us a mention on that. Uh, Sarah Harrison says, we're listening. Please say hello to us. Hi to Phoebe and Ellie. Phoebe and Ellie, hello to you. And Ian Bailey. Hello, Ian. Good to have you with us. Ian and Debbie, uh, great commentary. Sat listening over St. Oban's Bay. We love you being with us and listening to us on Liberation Radio as well. It's Murray Norton, Ben Donnell's up here on the commentary team. And plenty of music coming on in the background too. scratched version I think it's Some really nice conditions here, some very nice shots of Rich and the Bronco in that in those first two displays. I see Chris saying great shots guys, yes, some lovely stuff there, despite filming into the sun, which is always a bit of a challenge. See just how grubby my camera two lens is. I need to do something about that in a minute. Um has been cleaned, but uh, not by me, I shall say. Um, So Falcon saying not heard anything on Raven cancelled. So I have, I believe Raven have cancelled. Of course that could always change, but I think uh, Team Raven, who are a late addition to the program, I believe in last. Um, yes, and Connor running through those people, those displays that were last. Um, Team Raven, Schnook, Aerosparks, Rolls Royce, Spitfire, Mustang, Thunderbolt. And the PBMF, sadly, all, I think, pretty well all of those due to weather, apart from the odd uh, technical, technical problem, but um, still got plenty to look forward to today. At the Bronco, two more French displays, the Corsair and the two Flamont. Beautiful, beautiful sounding aircraft, especially with two of them, four of those engines. Someone can whisper in my ear, what engine? But they sound absolutely beautiful. And we've got, um, it's interesting to see someone saying the, the aircraft mic sounding really good today. They seem to work quite nicely here with the benefit of the, the sea wall. So they're positioned just directly in front of that. So you, you wouldn't, as a, someone positioning microphones, it wouldn't be my first choice, but something about the uh, wall reflecting back some of the audio makes things uh, sound quite full. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to hear, see someone was enjoying that. It will stand out particularly during the Flamont display. Two of those aircraft joining us later on. Marchetti as well. We have the Catalina arrive uh, not too long ago. And of course the Red Arrows. Ready and raring to go I'm sure. Sat at the airport here in Jersey. And Adam's pointing to something. So it looks like we've got uh, Mar Marchetti maybe in front of him. It's, uh, Cameras has picked it up, I'll give you it. What is this, Ben? This is the Sai Marchetti SF260. And a pair of seagulls just passing in front of us as well. This is a quite delightful aeroplane. We've actually seen it in the past in the Jersey International Air Display in military hands. Uh, remember its last appearance, I think, was in 2010 with the Belgian Air Force display team, which was then known as Hardship Red, now the Silver Swallows. This is, an, not the um, uh, Silver Swallows, the uh, Red Devils, I should say. The Silver Swallows are the uh, Irish Air Corps aerobatic team. But this aircraft is privately owned by Paul Freeland, one of the newer display pilots on the 
British Air Show circuit. First time we've had him here in Jersey, and he's showing us the capabilities of this delightful aeroplane, which you could describe almost as a sort of Ferrari of the skies. Italian designed and built, high performance, elegant, very desirable. Do you know, the word elegant was exactly what I was going to use. It just, it just sounds elegant, it purrs, it, it looks elegant, it looks as if it's always calm and in control. But it does have an extremely good aerobatic capability. We're not actually going to see that demonstrated in the course of this particular display, but it is fully aerobatic. This aircraft has a 260 horsepower flat six Lycoming engine, hence the SF260 designation. And that airframe is, as you can see as it flies past, very aerodynamically efficient. It was designed by one of Italy's top aeronautical engineers, a man called Stelio Frati, who didn't know how to design a bad-looking aeroplane, really. And the first prototype made its maiden flight back in 1964, but it remains hugely popular to this day. And why not? It's a tremendous aeroplane. It's as I say, fully aerobatic if you wish it to be so. It's also a very, very capable touring aeroplane for the private owner, 180 knot cruise speed, range somewhere around 1,100 nautical miles, and seating for four. Oh, do you know, that, that, that's a 60s classic right there. It really is, it really is. Maximum speed somewhere in the region of 236 knots, agile and pretty. This aircraft intended originally as a fast sporting and touring aeroplane but very soon the world's militaries cottoned on, the Italian Air Force uses them as basic trainers, the Belgian Air Component does as I said and several uh, Belgian Air Force and Air Component display teams have been mounted on the SF-260, not just Hardship Red and its current incarnation, the Red Devils, but also this is where I was getting confused. The Swallows yep. were a Belgian team of the past on the uh, SF260. Rather closer to home, the Irish Air Corps used an armed version of the SF260, the SF260W, the Warrior, for many years. This is also potentially a capable light ground attack platform for air forces, maybe without the resources to operate fleet of combat aircraft and those two distinctive tips on the on either wing I always sort of notice the design of this it looks like it's it's been it's been honed in a design workshop it certainly has as I say Stelio Frati a great craftsman and he produced a whole series of incredibly beautiful uh, light aeroplanes in Italy in fact you mentioned those tip tanks they are one of the really distinctive features mm. of the SF260 design you might have noticed they've got little winglets on the inboard sides of them which direct air the airflow onto the outer edge of the ailerons and that helps ensure that the pilot still has very good roll authority of the aircraft even when it's in the stall wow it's a uh... It's a beautiful looking aircraft and I know it'll be a great view from the third floor of the Radisson Blue Hotel. Karen Hemmings has been in touch. Uh, she said, we're watching through the panoramic windows of the third floor of the Radisson, uh, listening live, enjoying a hotel picnic, having done our first ever triathlon this morning around the bay. This aeroplane is making it look easy to go around the bay. Yes, a bit different to a triathlon, Karen, but welcome. <laughs> uh, ben. Yes, indeed, Paul Freeland flying this aeroplane. He's owned it since October 2014. He works as an engineer for Cosworth, renowned for their activities in the motorsport field in Northampton. He's been flying for 14 years. He got his aerobatic rating in 2016 and a couple of years later gained his first display authorization from the UK Civil Aviation Authority. And he's very heavily involved in the display circuit, also now as a committee member on the British Air Display Association. This aeroplane is a very old example of the type. It was first registered in Italy in November 1966, and it's the oldest production example still flying. The uh, predecessor, the very first production aircraft, came to a rather sticky end in the 1970s, but this one soldiering on. A lovely little fly past, much closer to us. Effortless. Very nice civilian colour scheme on this airframe as well, which was applied for the previous owner, Stephen Stead, well-known warbird pilot on the 
mainland European mm. circuit. Paul put it onto the British Register after he had acquired it and indeed around the time he was starting to display it in 2018 and he chose a suitably Italianate combination of registration uh, letters, albeit with the usual G prefix, G for golf, the prefix for aircraft registrations on the UK, civil registered, Golf Romeo Alpha Zulu India, grazie. Nice. That's. I mean, if you're going to have a personalised number plate, have it. In Absolutely. The I mean, it, you know, that is definitely the way to go with this. This is really an aeroplane that, for a lot of customers, both civil and military, offered rather jet-like performance at the much lower costs associated with operating a piston-engined aeroplane. It's an extremely desirable aircraft. Very practical, a lot of luggage stowage space for longer trips as a tourer and, as I said earlier, very, very good fuel consumption also, making this an eminently practical proposition for someone wishing to use this aeroplane for, for example, long-distance trips into Europe. Oh, yeah, you know what, we all live in that world, don't we, Ben? The nice, nice long trip, <laughs> distant trip to, you know... Somewhere in Europe, we just fuel up the, the plane and go. I was going to wonder, because I mean, this looks like it's, it's not a cheap plane, but you're saying it's economical in terms of maintenance. Oh, yes, by the uh, standards of its class, it offers an excellent combination of economy and performance. Also, a very nice interior. It has red piping on uh, leather seats. Very nice way to travel around. It's a classic 60s tour. It really is, yeah. yes, yes, but one that proved popular and remained in production for a very, very long time. And there were also turboprop versions of this design made available, rather more expensive than the basic uh, piston-engined model, of course. And one of those turboprop SF260s, some of you might remember, made an appearance in the 2008 James Bond film Quantum of Solace. If you think this design looks a bit familiar, it's the aircraft that attacked James Bond while he was trying to make his escape in a Douglas DC-3. Uh, yes, which he magically, with the power of movies, managed to do, but there you go. Uh, so, yeah, a terrific aircraft and a very graceful in the sky as well. And again, the weather so far holding well. As that wonderful elegant aircraft makes its way across the bay once more and uh, lots of people enjoying this right here live on Liberation Radio a shout out to the Peters family Oliver Peters is 11 months old and we brought him over for his first ever Jersey Air Show there's nothing like starting them early uh, the, he's, he's there with his big sister Alice the first of many fingers crossed the weather is good for us so thank you very much indeed to that the Peters family thank you Daniel and uh, good to see you hope you're all enjoying it Paul Freeland coming to the end of his display with the Sai Marchetti SF260. And you're talking about uh, cost, Murray. The uh, more modern examples offered by the manufacturer, both the piston engine SF260E and the turboprop 260TP models, mm. well, they would set you back rather more, somewhere in the region of between a quarter and half a million dollars at most recent prices that I have here. Excellent. Get me four. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Always, always nice to know how much something's going to cost, but priceless seeing it flying out there. So nice and elegant, wonderful aircraft. Uh, still, still out there actually. I thought it had disappeared from view, but back in again. Final pass coming up. So again, your chance to wave farewell on this run. Getting our information direct from the radio. Final pass. Chance for a wave and a wave goodbye to our pilot called Paul Freeland. Paul Freeland, thank you Paul. And a very good example there of someone who is a relatively newly fledged private pilot being able to get into the air display world with the help of all the experience that's at the disposal of someone who wishes to do so and of course who takes the whole thing suitably seriously and Paul's been a really good addition to the display circuit with his SF260. Marvellous. Well, thank you very much to Paul and thank you very much indeed for all that detail there. Ben Donnell, who's the editor of Aeroplane Magazine, is our expert commentator. Thank heavens he's here, is what I say. Um, Anna Byram. Hello, Anna. Hi, Murray. Lovely to hear you today. Please say hi to the Byrams. Not the usual um, 
air display party that we throw due to James's broken leg and Anna recovering from flu. James, Anna, recovery to you both soon. It's great to have your company, though. Uh, we're here with the kids and the cousins enjoying the sunshine and the spectacular air show. Thanks to everyone who makes this happen. And it is an awful lot of people that make this happen, isn't it? It certainly is, yes. It's not just the pilots who are entertaining us, but also their ground crews, of course. We mustn't forget those. The engineers who get the aircraft ready. And behind the scenes in the organisation of the air display, an enormous team of people giving up their time for free. Of course, with the added difficulty of us having two sites in effect, because while we're here, there's also a team over at the Air Display HQ adjacent to Jersey Airport, making, th making sure everything runs smoothly there for the participants operating out of the airport today. Now, one of those is the Catalina from Plain Sailing at Duxford, which some of you may have seen over the horizon arriving from its base a little earlier on. Well, that is going to be coming up a little later in the afternoon now, so I think we're going to have a short break in proceedings because the next item is going to be the Corsair, which is due on just after 20 past three. That's followed by the two Flamants. Then we'll see the Catalina slotting in at about five to four with the withdrawal of both Team Raven and the Mustang before the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team, the Red Arrows, bring things to a close, scheduled for 20 past four. Excellent. You mentioned the Red Arrows. They couldn't, unfortunately, um, uh, do the display in Guernsey, so this is their Channel Island display exclusive. It is. Not I that believe I'm gloating in any way, obviously. I believe they've flown in a spare jet following some technical snags earlier yeah. on, and so all is set for them to close the show. Excellent. Good. Well, we're all very happy about that. Uh, just... Uh, great to hear so, from so many people We're, this is almost the comfort break in the middle of the air display which is good uh, <laughs> not putting too fine a point on it uh, Anna Laboutelier we just wanted to thank everyone at Liberation Radio for the best treat today uh, we've been spoiled by Harper's Catering uh, with a three course meal uh, they were one of our prize winners from our Facebook competition on Liberation Radio and they're in the VIP market at the moment uh, Anna says I'm with my husband Robin my daughter Amelia and her best friend Jaden uh, and we've been given aeroplane pins, binoculars and so much food and drink and we're now enjoying the air show. It's just amazing and we cannot thank you guys enough for this wonderful opportunity. That's our pleasure. Shane Swartz is listening to us in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, thank you Shane for that and he's enjoying the air show in Cape Town. And uh, Kerry, Kerry Petrie is on sat on the wall on Victoria Avenue, be careful. Uh, enjoying the sun, the red arrows are my favourites. Carol says hi from the Australians watching the air show from First Tower, especially Lenny and little Paige who love the red arrows, and a shout out to Bradley and Oliver who are enjoying the show and the music, which is all rather splendid. rather splendid but the music is something we won't be broadcasting here on YouTube um, sad to say but we can't do that due to rights reasons I feel like come on desert island discs thanks for tuning in everybody thanks for joining in in the chat and well done Eagle 001 for making the journey from Germany to the UK for the Duxford show this weekend we're very much looking forward to joining you Eagle for all those Spitfires and Hurricanes check helicopters as well it's going to be a really excellent show at Duxford over the weekend action-packed time of year here um, at the moment Jersey ferry tomorrow to the UK up to Duxford and then flying out to the Czech Republic for us for the NATO days air show all of those events live broadcast either here on YouTube or on our streaming service at watch.planestv.com if you're wondering who this strange voice is hello my name's Ian, I run Planes TV. That's the YouTube live broadcast aspect of this uh, production. Uh, you can hear Murray and Ben commentating through the display. And as Ben said, we're a little bit of a gap now prior to the Corsair display at about 20 past three. It's 15 minutes time, so do stick around. Really looking forward to that. And as you can see, really nice conditions here now. And the Corsair validated yesterday, producing some really nice vortices off the wingtips. And in this blue sky, I'm expecting Adrian to pick up some really nice parts during the display. Right, both my uh, camera operators decided that 20 minutes into the live broadcast, it's time for a trip to the loo. So I'm literally here on my own, but it's, uh, it's a good setup. We're all, we're all doing well here. 
What a wondrous stream, says Ray Bandit. Well, I quite agree. Quite agree. I'm, to, I'm looking through the chat, so if you do want a uh, shout out or something, there are ways of uh, dropping a super chat on there. And of course, YouTube members always get a shout out, no questions asked. And, uh, and our regular viewers, I'm used to picking out. So I'll make sure you get a shout out. Uh, Julian's saying, don't think the typhoon has ever flown in Jersey. I'm sure we had typhoon last year. And I'm sure, perhaps even in previous years, I'm not sure about that actually, but I'd be very surprised if it was just last year. In fact, I think if it was the first year the typhoon had flown, I'd have made a song and dance about it. But yeah, we've seen typhoon here just last year. Uh, that live broadcast available to view, of course, on our YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, we're both scratching our head, head, heads now um, on that one, but I'm sure I was expecting it. I'm wondering whether we, we didn't end up with a typhoon. Can't remember. Can't remember. It's terrible, isn't it? We really should be able to remember these. I won't say they all blend into one, but uh, yeah. Stretching my memory back a year is apparently a bit of a challenge. Um, it was good. Thank you for that. Rowan saying, living here in Jersey, tuning in. Why aren't you down here? Or perhaps you are. One thing that's really standing out here, as a man, I live down in deepest, darkest Devon and my internet is appalling. Well, hotel Wi-Fi here, reception everywhere, and uh, certainly the wonderful internet connection that Jersey Telecom has provided for us down here at the seafront. All remarkably fast, so I'm very grateful for that. You could broadcast the music if you give the some of your great singing over the top, says Kevin. Oh dear, oh dear. You sound like you're almost... I mean, thank you, Kevin. I, I do have a lovely singing voice. I, I can't recall ever subjecting my YouTube audience to it, but I um, did try... did ch attempt um, three sentences of stand-up comedy on the last live broadcast, and I, I won't be repeating that again. Failed to uh, dig the punchline out of my brain. Cannot hear the commentary very well. The background noise is a bit high. Yeah, I'm not controlling the level of that. I am riding the level I get from them a little bit. Um, it's fluctuating a little bit. The, uh, the trailer there in not a excellent audio uh, audio booth, but um, I'll, I'll try and do better there. Who else can I see in the chat? Lots of lovely. And Monty joined us as well. Typhoon evening display at Bournemouth was fantastic. It really was, you know, reheats lighting up the sky and, and those dark conditions. I don't know why I was scratching my head about going, really. Uh, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? You're putting a typhoon up in those kind of conditions, you want to point a camera at it. Uh, good to see so many of you joining in the chat. And if you have just started watching, we are uh, expecting the Corsair in watch about 12 minutes time and an action-packed afternoon might that be stretching it it may be we've had a few cancellations but lots of interesting displays to come including the red arrows we saw the uh, saw red 10 there preparing for their slot i hope this lovely pocket of blue sky sticks around for that it'd be lovely to see a full display on the red arrows here they've been working hard i think with uh, getting serviceable jets in the serviceable jets into the right places to make sure they can put on a show here today. So hats off to them and yeah, very much looking forward to seeing them. If you're new to Planes TV and you haven't watched one of our broadcasts before, we've been doing this for 30 years, or at least filming aircraft for 30 years, and that back catalogue of programmes is available on our streaming service. That's at watch.planestv.com. Um, Yes, that back catalogue stretching back 30 years. Lots of really interesting stuff from the 90s. Um, stood next to someone who wasn't born in the 90s, but uh, I'm sure is Is that right? Um, but uh, yeah, some of the aircraft we no longer see, sadly, things like Victor's Phantoms, Black and Ears, those days. Um, really nice to be able to bring those older programmes to you in, in, in what feels like an actual way now, online. So yeah, watch.planestv.com to uh, view our back catalogue. 
And if we hit a certain number of likes, I'm quite keen to encourage people to sign up there because if you do, you'll be able to watch this weekend's Duxford, um, Duxford live stream. 43 likes on this video. Hmm. So yeah, we've got live broadcasts coming up on Saturday and Sunday from Duxford. It's the Battle of Britain Air Show, 22 Spitfires flying, hopefully. 22 Spitfires flying, what more do you need to know? Um, I'd encourage anyone to sign up to watch.planestv.com and join us for that if you're not going to the show itself. I think tickets are still available. 22 Spitfires, a really good number of Hurricanes as well, the exact number I, I forget. Um, the Czech Air Force represented at the first time at Duxford since the Second World War, we think, um, with the hip and hind displaying. We saw that display at Air Tattoo in July. So it's going to be a pretty spectacular show, really good live broadcast, as Duxford shows always are. So, so yeah, sign up over at watch.plaintv.com. Um, I'll tell you what, since we're on 200 likes, 200 odd likes, if we manage, if we manage to get up to 500 likes on this video, I will pop on the laptop, create a coupon code, and give you a prom give you a discount on that subscription. It's normally £10 a month. I'll decide how generous to be once we hit over 500 likes. Let's see how we go. So if you're watching on YouTube, do give the video a like. It not only uh, increases the likelihood of me uh, setting up a coupon code for you for that subscription service, but also helps us in promoting this live broadcast and letting other people know it's worth watching. So yes. Give it a like, see, let's see how quickly we can hit 500 likes, about a thousand people watching at the moment. So as I said earlier, we've got about eight minutes to go until the Corsair. Uh, and uh, Red Arrow's uh, slot time, I think it was about 20 past four. Um, I'm trying to wrap my brain as to what might Oh, we've got Catalina as well, uh, arrived from Duxford, the guys made, again, a group of, group of folks making a serious effort to um, get the aircraft over here. Just listening to Adrian in my ear, chatting to people. Um, yeah, so there's some nice displays to look forward to. Here are the commentators chatting again, I'm just going to bring them up. Gold, Liberation Radio Classics, all Liberation Radio hits, three styles of music. I'm Murray Norton, good to be with you. Hello, good afternoon. Along with Ben Donnell, we're here uh, doing the commentary and uh, describing what's happening as things do happen, and there is plenty, and we've had a little shuffle round in the running order. I think, Ben, just give us the update on that. Yes, we have. Just uh, before we uh, went off to that last piece of music, as I said, we'll be seeing the Catalina a little later on the programme now. So the next item will be the Corsair in just under 10 minutes' time. That will be followed by the two Flamants, then the Catalina, and that will be leading us up to the Royal Air Force Aerobatic team, the Red Arrows, and their scheduled slot time of 20 past four. Excellent. Hello to Erin and Summer and Harrison, not Harrison Ford, uh, and Chloe there at West Park, uh, and Kieran, who's there with a tin of Pringles. Very nice to know that you're enjoying this afternoon. Uh, thank you for all the dedications and requests we've been getting. And if you want to mention at any point, then uh, get on to us uh, at uh, Liberation Radio via our social media channels uh, on Facebook, Liberation Radio on Facebook or Liberation Radio on Twitter. Follow us and give, we'll give you a mention. Uh, Nikita Conman. Hello, Nikita. Nikita says, could you give a shout out to the three amigos, Zoe, Nikita and Danielle, sat in the middle of the avenue having the best of times. Uh, all right. And Nikita says, uh, shout out to my bestie and my little prince watching the air display. Love you both loads. Love from Auntie Nick's. Uh, Jenny Ryan says a shout out to Nat and Joe and Lewis and Jenny and Matilda, Betsy. They're watching the air show on the avenue, excited to see their favourites, of course, the Red Arrows. And uh, Donal, Donal Murray, really enjoying the show. We've been living in Jersey for just over a week. Welcome. Uh, uh, can you give a shout out to Donal and uh, Abby and James and Jess and Gran and Grandpa? Oh, and Abby and Abby and I saw Coldplay two weeks ago in, Gla uh, in uh, Glasgow. Almost as good as the planes and the show today. Lovely. And from our other hospitality winners who won, uh, uh, they were the Liberation Radio competition this morning, uh, which was on our Facebook page and announced on our breakfast show this morning by Paul. 
Sarah says, hello, could you, uh, thank you very much indeed. Rosie says, we're enjoying it very much. Sarah Perkins says, hello, could you please do a shout out to uh, Keanu and Noah, who are excited for the Red Arrows. More dedications coming up in just a minute. This is Liberation Radio. Mel has been out mingling with the crowd and here's what she got from a couple of them. Sad to say, we're not going to hear from uh, who Mel's been chatting to in the audience. You, su- you are going to be subjected to another five minutes of me waffling on. This is Ian from Plains TV, our room, the live broadcast aspect of what you're uh, enjoying, hopefully, today. On Plains TV, that's been uh, recording uh, aviation events for a good 30 years. And uh, yeah, busy, busy period for us at the moment. As I mentioned, we're live here today, live from. Duxford over the weekend and then onto the Czech Republic so lots of uh, live, walk, live air show action lots of live broadcast action coming from air shows in the near future so yeah this one on YouTube the weekend on watch.planestv.com next week we'll be live on the Yagalo 2000 YouTube channel so that's the NATO Days event in the Czech Republic that's their own YouTube channel which will be live on. Move your mic up. Someone asking in the chat, a uh, bit of a wait for the course. Uh, yes, that's right, that's right. Not too much longer though. Expected in about two minutes' time. How are we doing on those likes? I said 500 likes, and I'll pop a coupon code on to sign up to that subscription service. We're on 300, having been on two. So well done. If you've just tuned in, do you give the video a like? And if we hit 500, I'll drop a coupon code for our subscription service. And if you do feel like using it and signing up on. Uh, watch that place to be.com. Yeah, you'll be able to use that coupon code to get a discount. So, yeah, I think it'd be lots, of, lots going on here. Bit of a movable feast. Keep an eye on uh, all sorts of things today. As I say, expecting a Corsair to come roaring in in about a minute's time. So, I'll bring the commentators' mics back out see if they've got any news for us. Thanks for joining us and do give the video a like if you're enjoying what you're seeing.
looks uh, uh, nice. Uh, it's uh, it's time for that course there. We're looking we're looking to uh, as we face out to Elizabeth Castle, and as you might be as well if you're along the waterfront area. Uh, we're looking to our left beyond the Radisson Hotel, and actually, uh, good afternoon to all our friends at the Radisson Hotel. They're all listening to us at the moment. I know the Radisson are playing what we are uh, broadcasting out to you. I know the Grand Hotel are doing the same, and there are various other places such as the Boathouse in St. Oban. Uh, good good afternoon to all of you, and thank you very much indeed for having Liberation Radio on and listening to us. Uh, we're on 24-7 and we play music on three different stations and you can choose between Liberation Gold, Liberation Classics and Liberation Hits. Whichever music you like, that's the one you choose. Breakfast show every morning is with me and I'll be back tomorrow morning and uh, straight after me Katie Ringsdor plays The Mystery Ears. So plenty on Liberation Radio for you to catch up on from time after time but uh, we crane our necks past the uh, the crane which is behind the Radisson in the hope that we can see that Corsair coming about. What are we expecting to see Ben? Well we're going to be seeing one of the greatest naval fighters of all time. An aircraft that won its spurs during the Pacific campaigns of the Second World War went on to serve with great distinction during the Korean War of 1950 to 53 as well and even in some conflicts subsequent to that and one of them has a particular association with the example that we're going to be seeing of what was the fastest American single-engine fighting airplane of its day when it appeared in 1940 with the first flight in May of that year it had the most powerful biggest capacity engine of any single-engine fighter of the time the 2000 horsepower Pratt & Whitney double wasp engine and this is an aircraft that was able to exceed 400 miles an hour. It has that wonderfully distinctive inverted gullwing configuration. In it comes from our left, the Transport F4U 5NL Corsair. Terrific sound. Again, I mean, I, I, the sound of an engine is, 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 is almost as, as rewarding as the beauty of it. Definitely. And especially a wonderful throaty radial engine like this double wasp in the Corsair. In case you're wondering why it has that inverted gull wing yeah. uh, configuration, this was because of one of the main requirements for operations aboard aircraft carriers, which was intended to be this aeroplane's main operating environment. Some beautiful wingtip vortices coming off the Corsair in these uh, slightly damp conditions with plenty of moisture in the air even though uh, it's a gorgeous day here on the front in St Helier. Obviously on an aircraft carrier you've got limited stowage whether on the deck or in the hangar beneath. So that's why you see a lot of uh, fixed wing carrier borne aircraft having folding wings. Mm. So the conundrum was how to incorporate folding wings into the Corsair design while still giving the propeller sufficient ground clearance because it has to have a very large prop as well given such a powerful engine and this configuration was the result of that. Well it certainly gives it a, a, an incredibly interesting design doesn't it from the wings and when you look at it sideways on and from underneath. Yes it does, it's one of the most instantly recognisable of all Second World War era fighters. In fact, most Corsair missions in the Second World War were flown from land bases, not from carriers. Notably, the US Marine Corps was the first to use the Corsair operationally from December 1942, and they were flying primarily from land bases. And the fleet air arm of the Royal Navy managed to qualify the Corsair for operations from carriers before the US Navy did so. There had been a few maladies with the design early on that had to be ironed out. But nonetheless, when they had been resolved, when the tactics for employing the aeroplane at war were perfected, the Corsair proved able to outclass the Mitsubishi Zero of the Imperial Japanese Navy, its main adversary, and other enemy fighters in most combat aspects. There it goes again catching the vapours of, uh, of the moisture in the air as it, it banks up uh, right in front of First Tower. Yes, this is an F4U5 NL model, a night fighter 
Corsair that was taken on charge by the US Navy in 1951 and assigned to a, a composite squadron, VC-3, nicknamed Blue Nemesis. Stationed at Moffett Field, California. It's a veteran of the Korean War. It was sent there in December 1952 aboard the aircraft carrier USS Valley Forge for a six-month operational tour, primarily flying night interdiction and radar intercept sorties. It then went back to Korea from August to November 1953 aboard the USS Boxer. This aircraft was retired from US Navy service in 1956. When it was one of 10 Corsairs supplied by the Americans to the Honduran Air Force and it was with that air arm from, 19, from 14th to 18th of July 1969 that it went back into combat when it participated in one of arguably the most interesting, historically interesting conflicts of that period. What became known as the Football War or the Soccer War between El Salvador and Honduras. It was so named because clashes resulted from a World Cup qualifying match between those two countries. And this aircraft flew air-to-ground missions against Salvadoran forces. Good grief, what, a, what an incredible story. Yeah, and it was also uh, the last conflict in history to see aerial combat between purely propeller-driven aeroplanes. That was a terrific fly pass, really enjoyed that. That's uh, an immensely attractive aircraft to watch, very pleasing. Yes, it is, and it's being absolutely beautifully shown off. It was retired by the Hondurans in 1970, stored for several years, went to the States, went through several private owners there. In 1986, it was bought by one of the great European aircraft collectors, Jean Salis. It was shipped to Amsterdam. It was then flown from there to the Salis family's airfield at La Ferte Alley near Paris, one of the most wonderful centres of historic aviation in the world. And it was flown regularly until 2003. Then went into quite a major overhaul and restoration. It was completed in 2018, and the aircraft was flown again in May of that year. Well, here we go for a. Undercarriage down, fly past, left to right as we look at. The aircraft is still owned by the Salis family as part of their collection that they call the Casque de Cuir, the leather helmets, that means in right. French. And who's flying it today? It's being flown by Jean Salis's son, Baptiste Salis. Mm -hmm. um, several of his sons are aviators themselves. Baptiste, a magnificently competent pilot in all manner of historic aeroplanes, whether genuine First World War fighters up to Second World War types such as this, and onwards to some of the early jets. Baptiste completing his display there with the F4U 5NL Corsair. We haven't seen this particular Corsair here in Jersey before, and that was a magnificent sight. Oh, well, that was his debut. That's very nice to know. Uh, so thank you very much indeed to Baptiste and, and indeed uh, the, the, the entire family for ensuring yeah. that that stays in good hands and we get to see it, which is which is quite what we want. Yes, and La Fete Allee is just the most magical place. A hilltop grass airfield near Paris. You really do travel through time aeronautically at their annual air shows there. One of the jewels in the crown of aircraft preservation and the Salis family has done an enormous amount to ensure the preservation not just of this aircraft but a whole fleet of others, many of which are unique airworthy survivors. So yeah, your congratulations and uh, appreciation. Very well placed. Good. Uh, Murray, can you say hello to Thomas and his friends who came all the way from Oregon in the US uh, and to Morgan, who is eight and apparently is going to be an astronaut. Well, good for you.
thanks for tuning in folks got some more flying coming to you soon not sure whether it's Catalina or Flamont not the Red Arrows they're not due for uh, about gosh where are we 30 40 about 50 minutes I think so a little bit of a wait for the Reds if that's why you're here but yes some really nice aircraft to come to uh, come in the uh, interim. The Flamonts we saw rehearsed yesterday and I can't remember seeing them. I might have been here I saw them in um, gosh 2010 maybe? I, I might, might have made that up. Could have been an Eastbourne show and the one thing that stands out with them for me is the sound so I'm hoping we can do a good job of representing that for you. A stereo pair of microphones so turn it up at home. And I was hopping on the chat. Bournemouth was heaving, yes, busy day at Bournemouth. And I'd like to know about mosquitoes. I see some chat about mosquitoes at the moment. One of my interests in New Zealand as a trip sometime. Lovely country, haven't been for 22 years. I'd love to come back down there. I think it was Tom started that conversation off asking if there's any mosquitoes flying at this air show. Yeah, that would be a nice thing, wouldn't it? No chance, I'm afraid, at the moment, but who knows for the future. Well, you can see we've done fairly well on the likes. I was saying earlier, you uh, fancy encouraging me to drop a coupon code for our streaming service, the watch.planestv.com service not already a subscriber and fancy signing up for this weekend's flying action from Duxford, the Battle of Britain Air Show, then do give the video a like if we hit 500, I scratch my head and think about how generous to be, and, and uh, yeah, set up a discount for you to um, essentially make use of. But if you really enjoy the free content, you're more than welcome to enjoy that too. Do give this video a like, just because it helps the YouTube know that we're worth watching. And of course subscribe here on YouTube. You can of course join as a member as well which helps support the channel. Right, the commentators back in action. Let's see what they've got to say. Bell and Jasper looking forward to seeing the Corsair. Well, they've just seen them. And uh, Tracy, Jasmine and Rose watching the air display from the Jardin de la Mer. Glad the sun is shining. Oh, not as glad as we are, let me tell you. Mel has been out and about and is on the avenue as well. Let's hear from Mel. to flam on in a very short order. Enjoy this. Our left hand side, when I say aircraft, it is in the plural, which is lovely. And these are two absolutely lovely aeroplanes, two of my absolute favourites on the European air show circuit. We have a pair of Dassault Flamands, we have an MD311 model and an MD312, and they come to us from the Amical Alonsonnez des Avions Anciennes based in Alençon. And to me, these aircraft, as they go through, their very stately display paces almost resemble a, pe resemble a pair of dancing elephants. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way of describing it. It really is. They, uh, uh, you don't see aircraft of that size in display together. You often don't see them doing close formation. No, that's absolutely true. And this is one of the great French post-war aeroplanes. An awful lot stemmed from this rather innocuous looking twin-engined aeroplane. The story starts with a man who was originally named Marcel Bloch, a pre-war aircraft designer and manufacturer, who during World War II refused to collaborate with France's occupying German forces. He was imprisoned at the concentration camp at Buchenwald and tortured. Nonetheless, he survived. After the war, he changed his surname to Dassault, a name that had been used in wartime by his brother, who was a mem member of the French resistance, taken as a derivation of the French word for tank. Hence was born the name Dassault that we associate with so many great military and civil aeroplanes of the post-war years. That'll be banking around as they drop down on the uh, on the right-hand wing. 
right over Elizabeth Castle. And one of the most marvellous sounds of the day from the Stekma 12S, 12 cylinder air cooled V12 engines, 580 horsepower each. The French Air Force, the Armée de l'Air, was looking for a new liaison aircraft, and the new Dassault company entered the fray with an aircraft they called the MB-30. They envisaged three versions of it, a bombing and navigation trainer, an aircraft optimised for operations in France's colonies and medical evacuation duties, and a liaison and crew training platform. And this was the result. The pilot trainer prototype first flew on the 10th of February 1947. They then decided it needed upgraded engine, so they switched to the Stekma 12 S's. So elegant. Yes, very, very Considering elegant. Considering the size. Indeed. Definitely not aerobatic. Uh, very no, no, elegant. No, no. They're ele elegant and, and stately almost. Stately is, is, is absolutely it, yes. The uh, aircraft was thus born in its rather more definitive form as the MD315, which made its maiden flight in July of 1947. So this is an aircraft type that's 75 years old this year. Mm. A production order was first signed that December. In the event, 325 of them were procured for the different French armed forces. And here, the glazed nose example is the MD-311. That's the navigator and bombardier trainer. That's the one in the dark camouflage scheme. The MD-312 has the solid nose. That's the aircrew trainer and communications aircraft. The third main variant, the MD-315, which also had a solid nose, was a general purpose transport and could carry out varied overseas missions. Flamants were delivered to the French Armed Forces between 1949 and 54. Units that flew them included the Air Force Academy at Salon de Provence, specialised schools for multi-engine crew training and transport aircraft operations, flight test centres and France's ministerial VIP transport squadron. But they were also used during France's war in Algeria because you could arm the Flamont with bombs or rockets. In fact, some MD-311 trainers conducted the first ever operational employment of the SS or AS-11 wire-guided anti-tank missile before it was ever used on helicopters. They used to fire them against separatist forces hiding out in caves. Wow. It's, it's got some history. I, 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 would, I wouldn't like to even hazard how much it is the upkeep of such aircraft because they must really that must take some money to keep one of those yes definitely the fuel alone is a major expense a beautiful break from the two flamants as they head in towards us yeah you're right the operation of these aircraft is a costly business certainly demanding support from various quarters any sponsorship they can find there are quite a lot of flamants in private hands in france with different associations since they were retired by the air force in 1982. well they parted for a little bit but my guess is that out on the horizon they're going to be meeting up again uh, one going over elizabeth castle the other one heading out across Noirmont. So uh, my, my suspicion is that we're, they're going to meet somewhere on the horizon. The two aircraft in this display include, as I say, examples of the MD-311 and 312 variants. The 311 is in dark camouflage because it was repainted to represent a wartime Douglas Boston bomber for a film called La Promesse de l'Aube, starring Charlotte Gainsbourg. That aircraft was destined to go into a museum in Germany. Instead, it was purchased by the association in Alençon and returned to flying condition. The MD-312 is actually the latest addition to the fleet, which they acquired in September 2013, after it had been operated for many years by another association based at Montsoulin in Bourgogne. It needed a new engine. It was also given a major overhaul once it arrived in Alençon in Normandy, where both of these aircraft are based at Valframbert Airfield. And 
the display today was flown for us by Alain Odola and Stéphane Odola, two of the leading lights of the Amical Alonsonnez des Avions Anciens. They're related, aren't they? Yes, they are indeed. I, I just, yes. you know, oh, the chances are. <laughs> OK, uh, well, that's the, the, the flamels as they head off into the distance and they'll be uh, uh, landing back at the airport. Are they landing back here or are they flying back straight back to France? I'm not sure, actually. I suspect they are recovering. In fact, I, yes, I do know they are recovering to the airport here. Excellent. Good. OK. Well, we wish them well, and uh, we'll look down our running order to see what comes next. But a big shout-out to Chantel and Colin for hosting us at their rooftop, watching the fabulous air display and loving the commentary, says, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, you are so, so welcome. So did I. I didn't have their sequence, so I didn't, uh, didn't know, but that's <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the um, beautiful sound of the Flamont there. Lovely to see those two aircraft. Yeah, real rarity in UK skies. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that sound. Ben mentioned it as well, didn't he? Oh, he also dropped the name of the engine, which I've forgotten uh, horribly. How are we doing on those likes? 401 likes, I think. Well done, everybody. I was at 200 when we. Uh, started that little discussion. If you're wondering who this other voice is, hello, it's Ian from Plains TV. I run Plains TV, like broadcasting air shows, covering air shows for 30 years. I'm pushing the buttons behind the scenes today, making sure uh, you're getting the best view of the action and hopefully sound as well. Real priority for us. Someone saying Team Raven may be next one. Well, as far as I'm aware, they sadly had to cancel for a last minute fill-in. I'm not expecting Raven. I am expecting the Catalina, which um, travelled down from Duxford this morning after a, um, yeah, a lot of effort to, um, to solve the technical problem that they'd had. So good on them for making the effort to get down here. Don't forget to hydrate, says Joe as well. Hmm, good point. I really should grab a drink, although I'm doing all right here. I'm in a little shelter out of the sunshine. So for a change, not uh, at risk of getting sunburned to an air show. And it has been a bit of a year like that. You know, we've been quite careful to uh, keep ourselves protected. Can't complain, can we? Wonderful summer we've had. Sadly, some of, the, the, some of those cancellations we've talked about due to the weather this today. It hasn't lasted for Jersey, I'm afraid. Although it's gorgeous at the moment. Really looking forward to the red arrows display in these sorts of conditions. You'll have, saw, you'll have seen the um, uh, vortices off the Corsair's wingtips in the kind of moist air. You'll be, you can certainly expect to see that from the red arrows. And there's something about a formation of hawks coming out of a loop in some moist air with streamers coming off the wingtips. That looks really quite dramatic. Tell I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to aviation video, can't you? I'm afraid it comes with the territory. Hopefully it makes the enjoyment of the uh, live stream all the better for you and Connor saying that Catalina is next yes that's what I am expecting and hoping so I'll be keeping my eye out out to my right at the moment I should see the aircraft take off and, although they do tend to sneak around the back and um, without us noticing hmm someone saying don't get the Americans talking about ice cream flavors would we'll be here all day Reminds me, I have in my possession a token for a free ice cream from the um, ice cream van that's sat right next to me at the moment. He's very, he knows how to make friends, doesn't he? The ice cream van man. Adam offering a shot of an ice cream van. You, you, why do you even need to ask, Adam? Of course, we need to see the ice cream van. 
give him a bit of advertising. Um, okay. Adrian can expose that shot uh, vaguely well enough. I'll, uh, I'll take it. <laughs> Might need a stop of ND out, I think, Adrian. Right, I'll, I'll, you can take it. You can be the judges. There's our ice cream van that's positioned right next to us. Bought his own generator as well. Look at that. Some well chilled ice creams in there. And yes, at some point, I must go and enjoy some of that Jersey Dairy Mr. Whippy or whatever it's called. Jersey soft ice cream. I'm sure Mr. Whippy has some brand name that I probably shouldn't have used. Yeah, it is a windy day today, Mark. Very, very blustery. It does affect the long lens camera work for us, uh, making things a little bit more challenging for, uh, for the displays. And certainly some of the, the cells of um, rain and, um, yeah, not very good weather there in the UK affecting other displays being able to join us. So we are, if you've just joined us, we are not expecting the BBMF and uh, quite a few displays that are based in, uh, in England. How are we doing on those lights? I'll tell you what, let's bring the um, commentators back up because I'm sure they're by their microphones. Please say happy birthday to Mark Cadu. Uh, he's the best boyfriend ever. Apparently, according to Melody, oh, who are we to argue about that? So thank you very much indeed for all of those dedications that we've had coming in. Uh, so that's what we've got at the moment. It's Liberation Radio. in the chat saying let us meet, meet, in the, meet us at Duxford very happy to do that you know where we um, meet ourselves at Duxford or perhaps you don't near the um, commentary position in front of the tower yeah give us a wave if I don't look too busy and I'm always happy to come and say hello as mentioned earlier we'll be live broadcasting the Duxford show on our streaming service of watch.planestv.com not that one donkey that one watch.plaintv.com it's our streaming service and I'm really excited about this one 22 Spitfires expected to be uh, part of the display Saturday and Sunday there and as I said earlier if we do hit that 500 likes and we're at 451 so 49 people managed to hit that like button I will dig out we'll set up a coupon code in fact, I'd better get that ready, because it looks like we might well do. I'll drop a coupon code and that will give you a discounted access to that streaming service, which will include Ducks for this weekend, but also our back catalogue of 30 years of Ayrshire action. So if you've got either yourself or someone in the house who enjoys the kind of uh, video work that we do, enjoys aviation. It's a nice thing to uh, yeah, stick on sometimes when uh, Netflix has let you down. Oh goodness, everybody's chatting ice cream now, I'm sorry. Hopefully it's good enough weather where you are to uh, justify either digging into the freezer or uh, stopping the ice cream van. Still Wars ice cream in Jersey, well, I don't, I'm not getting into this brand name. I can see the word Cadbury on this uh, ice cream van and I can see Jersey soft ice cream. And a, and a genuine Jersey mark, seal of approval. So it's got to be good stuff, hasn't it? We'll let you know if I manage to sneak one before the airplane finishes. And thank you, Rowan, for that warning about the seagulls. As a, as a Devon chap down on the south coast of Devon, they are vicious. Uh, insert expletive here when it comes to food. Chips and ice creams are fair gained for the seagulls down where I am. So yes, very well aware he's saying 
careful of those darn seagulls. They'll carry off the ice cream. <laughs> he says they'll carry off the ice cream truck, given an opportunity. Yeah. They do seem to like this stuff. Hell diver. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we are having a few uh, aerial displays from seagulls here. Jerry's saying Catalina will not land on the sea. No, it won't. I don't think you'd want to in the current state of it. It's not something that they've done for, for many years. All right, commentators back in action. I'll hand you back over to Ben and Murray. Like seeing you know, Wogan almost. It's just, it's that, it's that royal. So it's great to see Tim Pollard out enjoying himself today. Great to see you, Tim. Uh, and thank you to everyone else who's been sending in dedications today. We have had so, so, so many of them. Uh, we were minutes away, Ben, are we? Oh, we are, yes. The cat leader is due in in a couple of minutes. I think it might be running in from the other directions, which we've seen so most of the other aeroplanes today. As we're looking out to see right to left. Yes, indeed. We're just awaiting final uh, confirmation of that. While the weather here remains, albeit extremely blustery, but also still very pleasant over the bay. So fingers crossed it remains so for the Red Arrows. I know we were sort of being prophets of doom earlier regarding the weather, but if you've just seen the forecast from the... Um, wasn't Jersey, pretty. Met Man earlier. Yeah, we were looking at the possibility of some very heavy showers potentially hitting us. It's obviously just luck of the draw. Yeah, it, we've got the right window at the right time, and let's hope that it just holds in time for our Red Arrows after the Catalina as well. That'll be terrific. Uh, lots of people loving the fact that Mel has been out talking to people and, and dogs and everything else. Mel, where are you now? that uh, Mel is having a lovely day. <laughs> We're not getting Mel's feed, so, uh, but we are all having a fabulous day here in Jersey. Very much looking forward to uh, Catalina very shortly. Adrian thinks he's spotted the aircraft. I see it. Now I'm going to take camera two. There it is. Catalina in the distance there, having just taken off from the airport. So Catalina will be with us in uh, just a few minutes' time. Jerry saying not landing on the sea. Yeah, I do remember seeing Catalina landing on the sea at events in the UK, but not something they've done for a long time that I'm aware of. Yeah, fresh water only. Salt water, obviously, it's a bit of an effort to clear that salt off a, an airframe the size of that. I don't really want the salt sitting around and um, creating corrosion issues. I, I, I'm sort of half guessing here, but I, I imagine that's why they don't. Right, I'll hand you back over to the commentators. I'm sure we've heard from Mel and the wonderful day that she's having. And ben, can, ben and Murray can take us through this display. I wonder if we're going to get the aircraft hugging the coast there. That's the display, potentially. Looking nice. National Air Display 2022. Ben, the Catalina. It's a big beauty, isn't it? It is a big beauty, and that, to me, is an incredibly evocative sight. The spectacle of this great maritime patrol and attack aeroplane of the Second World War in particular out over the seascape here in Jersey. These very much the sort of conditions, indeed often in far worse conditions than these, in which these aeroplanes operated during the Second World War, particularly in the Battle of the Atlantic, but also in the warmer climes of the Pacific Theatre. Indeed the aircraft just traversing around the bay now to run in via the traditional route through the gap between Elizabeth Castle and land and a very good view indeed for the people on board the ferry as we see the run-in of the consolidated PBY-5A Catalina from plain sailing at Duxford in Cambridgeshire. What a graceful entrance that is. The Catalina coming in, on the first of its flight mates, tipping its wing, banking its way out right the way across the bay. As you can see, this aircraft, which would often be described as a flying boat, is in fact an amphibian, hence the fact that it's able to operate from the land at Jersey Airport. We'll see it later, no doubt, demonstrating its 
uh, amphibious attributes when the tricycle undercarriage is brought down. In fact, the early Catalinas were pure flying boats and didn't have any land undercarriage. Right. Have they, have they featured in movies? Am I right in thinking I've seen Catalinas in all sorts of movies? Oh, yes. Yeah, very many uh, movies indeed over the years have featured uh, Catalinas and also certain advertising uh, yeah. campaigns as well. Yep. It's really an aircraft that's emblematic of wartime flying boat operations. This aircraft was developed in the mid-1930s. The US Navy recognised the potential need for a new patrol bomber aircraft to counter potential Japanese threats in the Pacific. Obviously, it took a few years for those threats really to materialise. This was the aircraft that won that competition to supply the US Navy with such a machine against a design from rival manufacturer Douglas. And it first took to the air as a prototype patrol aircraft in March 1935. The patrol bomber version took to the air in May of 1936. And that aircraft achieved a new world distance record in excess of 3,400 miles on its maiden flight. So its capabilities were apparent right from the outset of this aircraft's gestation. Extraordinary. It's, it's got a, a, a fantastic history, basically. Oh, it has an absolutely illustrious history. It's also very interesting in design terms. You see that massive, huge, often described as a barn door type of a wing? Yeah. Well, it's what's known as a wet wing, which means it incorporates fuel tankage within the wing. So there's a weight saving involved in that. And it makes the design very slippery because there's no need to incorporate that fuel tankage elsewhere on the airframe. So it's actually a very aerodynamically efficient design. And that's added to by the fact, again, as we'll see through the display, that the wingtip floats for water operations retract into the wings. So they're not uh, constantly down, adding drag, detracting from the aircraft's performance and range. Mm -hmm. These aircraft were used extensively in all theatres of World War II, starting out in the Pacific, into the Battle of the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean. They were involved in some very famous operations. US Navy PBYs spotted the Japanese fleet making towards Midway. It was a Royal Canadian Air Force example, a Canso, which is actually how this aircraft started out, that spotted a Japanese invasion force heading for Ceylon and in so doing really saved the Royal Navy fleet in the Indian Ocean. You can see the uh, wingtip floats were yeah, down there. Just, on just all the, the, the floats on the wings are down, uh, they retract away, but uh, good to see them in both positions as it does its fly past. You can see its capability as it does so. Um, interesting to be flying an aircraft where the props are above you. Yes, and that's another very interesting feature of the design. Of course, the rationale behind that in this instance is to keep them further out of the spray on the water. Yeah. And all the, all the engine controls, the main engine controls, are in the cockpit roof as well. Right. So, rather than on the console between the two. Yeah, roof. in case of any floodage, you don't want anything getting wet. With the RAF, the Catalina, and in fact the RAF first gave this aircraft the name Catalina, which was then adopted by the Americans, played a vital role in bridging the so-called Mid-Atlantic Gap which was an area of the North Atlantic where, for a time, German submarines were able to roam almost at will because it was out of range of conventional land-based aeroplanes and supported by Focke-Wulf Condor maritime strike aircraft were able to do an awful lot of damage to the North Atlantic supply convoys that were so crucial in keeping Britain supplied during World War II. The first batch of around 50 Catalinas was ordered for the RAF around the outbreak of war in 1939. In the end, around 570 of them were operated. And without them, and also their sister aircraft, the land-based Consolidated Liberators in particular, also the short Sunderland flying boats, the Battle of the Atlantic would not have been won in the time in which it was won. What, I, what, I, what I'm interested in is that, that wonderful fly pass there and, and, and that, that, that curve round and away from Elizabeth Castle and, and, and back towards uh, the St. Urban area um, is the juxtaposition of the two 
that we're, the one that we're seeing now and what we're going to see afterwards, yes. which of course we'll talk about. We've gone from slow and graceful to what will be fast and furious yes. in, in, a, in a few minutes' time. And I noticed actually a commercial aircraft in, in the time that that had taken off has managed to get itself away and up into the clouds as well. So for those who were looking at that, there was another aircraft up there for a short time, but many, many miles away. So the Catalina making it... There's a, uh, is there a little bump at the back of the wing in the fuselage there with this observation? There are on both sides very large fuselage side blisters. Yep. In wartime, Kathleen is equipped with these blisters, would have had guns mounted in them very often. Right. The ones on this aircraft are actually larger than the wartime originals. They were fitted in a previous ownership of this aeroplane when it was intended to be used for African safari tours. Yep. That never came off, but those large outsized blisters have been retained. And I can tell you they give you a fabulous view out. Because um, you've been in it, you? I have had a short flight with this aeroplane, and it must be a wonderful way to travel over longer and more picturesque distances than the one I flew from Cambridge Airport to Duxford, just a few miles away. Because what a vista you get from them. And just give us an idea what they're like inside. Uh, the aircraft. This one has been fitted out with a few passenger seats. This aircraft is operated by a group, is owned by a group of shareholders, operated by plane sailing, but it's owned by a group of shareholders, not all of whom are pilots. They have quite a few non-pilots as well who just want to be involved with this aeroplane and help ensure its continued upkeep. So they take them away on um, longer distance trips, for example. They were in Jersey just this past week, actually. For a shareholder event so it's got a certain number of passenger seats on board of course it is quite noisy but that is something you get used to after a while um, but it is still very evocative of how these aircraft were during wartime even if there are a few more creature comforts on board for the modern era excellent we should say that the heroism displayed by Catalina Cruz during wartime was considerable to the extent that two Catalina pilots assigned to RAF Coastal Command were awarded the Victoria Cross, both for their heroism under heavy fire. One of them was Flight Lieutenant David Hornell, a Canadian from No. 162 Squadron. The other, Flying Officer John Cruikshank of No. 210 Squadron, both of whom managed to press home the most extraordinary attacks against German U-boats, despite being very heavily shot up. I, I was about to say that wartime use from something such as a Catalina, it does look like a big fat sitting duck, doesn't it? It does, but the aircraft was also very agile, and that was a help in certain circumstances. You can see it's got quite a tight turning radius. Yep, it's on its final pass, by the way. So, opportunity for the big wave at the Catalina. The aircraft being flown today by Air France pilot Sebastien Mazzucchetti. Vintage aircraft owner in his own right. He has a Spartan executive, 1930s executive aeroplane that he owns himself and flies. A uh, nice little wing tip tilt just to say goodbye as he waves goodbye to us we wave goodbye to him indeed always nice to see the Kathleen and to, rec and to recall some of those wartime exploits in fact just in closing on that subject Murray I mentioned uh, flying officer John Crookshank there one of the two Victoria Cross recipients um, uh, who received that award for operations in Catalinas he is still alive at the age of 102 he is the last living recipient of the VC who was awarded during the Second World War. Yep. And this in spite of the fact that he was hit in 72 places on his body by German fire during the mission for which he was awarded the VC. Wow, extraordinary. So that's, that's the end we've seen of him. We know what's coming next. Next, we're looking to the skies. For the red arrows we'll let you know as soon as they're very close but they are our finale and we're very much looking forward to the red arrows that'll be coming next
Just joining us, thank you for doing so. My name's Ian. I run Planes TV at the moment, looking after the um, the buttons in the background, uh, making sure you've got a good view of the flying action here from Jersey. As Murray and Ben mentioned, we're looking forward to the Red Arrows in the very near future. And uh, Adam's just run off to uh, bring the microphones up a step or two from uh, down by the beach where we have them. But tide has now come in and uh, yeah the mic's needing to uh, come up a little bit some of the challenges of working at a seaside show so thank you very much everybody for tuning in hope you appreciate his efforts to get the audio aspect of the live broadcast completely enjoyable see the Catalina there heading over to the airport about to land right at the red slot which is about 12 minutes time so stick around how have we done Oh goodness, I've got to go and set up a coupon code on the website. Right, I'll tell you what, stick around to the end of the Red Arrows and I'll give you a coupon code. I haven't decided how generous it's going to be, um, but a coupon code for our streaming service. There's a link in the description to watch.planestv.com. That's where we have our back catalogue of shows, so all of Air Tattoo is available on there, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's the big air show at Fairford in uh, England. And our back catalogue as well, stretching back 30 years, so lots of airshow action that you can fill your winter evenings with as we head into those longer uh, nights. Yeah, a bit of TV action that isn't some rubbish on Netflix, it's some jets flying around. That's what we like to see, I think. So yes, watch.planestv.com, and I said earlier, if we hit 500 likes, I will give you a coupon code to uh, subscribe there at a discounted rate. And we've got to 509, so I better go sort that out for you. Let's see, Let's 10 there. Check in the wind. I can tell him it's fairly breezy. I'm going with gusting 30 knots, I'd imagine, something like that. It shouldn't be an issue. Right. I hope not, anyway. And the cloud, there are gaps in the clouds, so I wouldn't be surprised for, um, that we got a full show in these kinds of conditions but uh, it's certainly not a guarantee the red arrows of course having three formats of display and I've seen them switch and change between all, all three of them I think possibly in some of the uh, changeable conditions we get at UK air shows so yeah red's due on very shortly the chat. Lovely to see so many of you tuning in. Callum saying hello and good afternoon. Good afternoon to you Callum. A free coupon for Joe. Joe wants free access. Mm. Might be too generous. I do have to feed the children over the winter. Um, so it won't be quite that generous. Let's see how generous you can uh, encourage me to be. Get those likes up a little bit. Well, I'm happy to have provided you that site, Galactic Jack, saying the first time you've seen a Catalina in flight. Seen being in uh, quote marks, since it seems that he's from South Africa. So yeah, it's quite, it's a lovely setting to see the Catalina over the sea, of course. Makes a lot of sense. And I don't know about you, but that backdrop is pretty spectacular. It's, yeah, a nice aircraft to see out here at Jersey. Yeah, red 10, uh, looking fairly happy. Not red 7, says Val, making the joke that uh, they're just being six aircraft at the moment. Uh, Dylan's saying red is a six ship today. We will see. Uh, I'm sure you got that information from a good source, but let's see, shall we? You never know what they managed to do. Well, 
Carl saying there's a fly on my TV screen that is in perfect sync with the Catalina. Nice, impressive. Is this a mosquito? I try, I try. The humour. Okay, I think the commentators are back, so I'll give you a bit of them. I'm going to go set up that coupon. If you don't mind, no, we don't mind in the slightest. We're quite happy to do that. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, all is good at the moment. It's Liberation Radio. We're waiting for the Red Arrows, which should be three or four minutes away. And we've got plenty of good music to keep you going as well, right here on Liberation Radio. Music here. We can't broadcast the uh, music out on YouTube for bright reasons, but we can hear the roar of a number of hawks uh, taking off from the airport. So I'm hoping Adrian might be able to pick them up as uh, they head off to the west. Everyone, the crowds now gathering. It's quite interesting to see how, uh, yeah, the crowds uh, ebb and flow during a uh, display, and of course the red air is always dragging everyone out. Val's saying if it was a mosquito, it would have been a dead one. Don't blame you at all. Just mind that TV. Got an excellent uh, half an hour's uh, live broadcast coming up for you with the red arrows. Thanks, Dylan, informing us that Red 10 said during an interview on Jersey Twitter that they're just running a, a six ships. Still a spectacular display. And David Roberts trying to make the deal that since I get a free ice cream, you should get free access to the on-demand service. I see what you're saying. I tell you what, if, if I manage to claim myself enough free ice creams to keep the kids going all winter, I, I might be I might be tempted to uh, <laughs> offer that. <laughs> we'll see. No, it's uh, it's so nice that we've been able to share so much live action on the streaming service this year and uh, thank you for everyone that signed up and stayed, stayed subscribed as well. Very conscious that over the winter obviously we don't have the um, flying displays, we will be trying to get overseas so we might might do a bit more but um, what we will definitely be doing is dragging a little bit more out of our archive. You might have heard Adrian t chatting during the Bournemouth broadcast about some of those archive tapes that are yet to see the light of day stuff that we he recorded during the 90s and was whittled down into a 60 minute program sometimes there's some really nice stuff of aircraft that we don't see anymore displays that we don't see and air shows air show venues even airfields that no longer exist and um, yeah some of that archive stuff is uh, we, we really need to get get it uh, captured on that service prior to those tapes no longer working because they will degrade so we're very keen to um, bring some of that to you. So we'll be doing that on the streaming service over the winter. Right, let's uh, see if we've got any commentary from the guys and I'll go set up that coupon, shall I? I hope he doesn't mind telling me telling you this, but on that, on that camera shot there, oh, I better go and check actually. I'll, I'll go and check if this chat minds me name dropping and let you listen to some commentary, if indeed the commentators are anywhere near their microphones.
Yes, I believe we are. So for the finale of our Jersey International Air Display flying display for 2022, it's my great pleasure to hand you over to Red 10 Squadron Leader Graham Muscat. In Jersey, my name is squad leader Graham Muscat, and as you just heard from Ben, I am Red 10, the team supervisor with the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team, the Red Arrows. It's absolutely fantastic to be back here in Jersey for the team. It's actually my first time I've, I've ever been to Jersey, and it's great to be here. Thankfully, the weather is looking though it's playing on our side today, so we should be able to get one of our displays in. My role as Red 10 is of course the team supervisor and as such I make sure that we adhere to the rules and regulations for the display. I'll also give you some wider information about the Red Arrows, about the wider Royal Air Force and also let you give some, also allow you to hear some of the radio transmissions through the display. I am in contact with Red 1 and 6 aircraft are airborne from Jersey Airport. This year we have been displaying as a seven ship throughout the season. However, we are only a six ship today with one of our aircraft having a technical fault on start earlier today. And you may have seen that we cancelled our Guernsey display this morning. However, we have got that aircraft airborne and we will produce a six ship today. So what does that look like for you then? Actually, the uh, front section of the display is four aircraft. That means some of our shapes are a little bit skinnier, a little bit narrower. However, it does mean that six and seven are airborne, which they are the synchro pair and they are responsible for the high speed head on the low passes that you'll see in the second half of the show. So the show is still a fast, dynamic and exciting show. As we're all aware, COVID-19 has had a huge impact on these types of displays and events. And it's great now that we can come to these events and see all these people and all the public gathered together. This is our last week of the UK season we have today, but hopefully we'll be displaying in Northern Ireland at the weekend, followed by the Great North Run on Sunday, and that will be the end of our UK display season. We'll take a small break with some leave for all the pilots and our engineers, and then we'll move our team from Scampton to Waddington before we then take on an ambitious five-week tour of the Middle East starting the end of October through to December and that's because one of the roles of the Red Arrows is of course to promote global Britain and as such we fly the red white and blue through the sky and promote global Britain in trade and industry across the world and no doubt you will have seen the ambitious three-month tour in 2019 where the team conduct their tour across the United States and Canada and there we engage with trade, industry and businesses promoting Global Britain across the US and Canadian continent. And last year we also performed in Estonia and Poland again, promoting Global Britain across Europe. And we also performed in the Expo in the Middle East, again promoting Global Britain. But of course we also represent the Royal Air Force, which as a service is on duty 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, uh, 365 days a year to ensure that our skies are guarded and made safe by those aircraft on quick reaction alert or working alongside our NATO allies also to guard the skies of Europe. There are three types of show that we can do. They are a full show, a rolling show and a flat show. The full show requires a height of 5,500 feet of minimum cloud base a rolling show of two and a half thousand feet and a flat show of one thousand feet and a 5k visibility obviously that decision is actually made by red one as he rolls into the show today looking at the weather i would expect at least a rolling show but as i said that call is made by red one about 30 seconds before the display starts we should be operating on time for about minute two one however red one has told me that they've got airborne a little bit early, they've got a little bit extra fuel to burn down before they run into the show. Red Arrows are also STEM ambassadors. That's science, technology, engineering and maths. And as such, we often go into schools, colleges and institutions, working alongside students. And those institutions promote the national shortfall in those subjects and hopefully encourage people to take up a career in those subjects. However, I can hear the team are getting ready and here they are, the 2022 Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team, the Red Arrows! Okay. Uh... As
As Red One pulls the team up, it means he's going for the first part of a full show. They are pulling up at over 400 miles per hour and 4G as they collapse into six arrow shape. You can just about see the, through the thin cloud the silhouettes of the aircraft and they'll be reaching a height of over 5,500 feet and before they set themselves back down to our minimum safe height of 300 feet over the sea. Red One brings the formation around to the right. Red One is squad leader Tom Bold. Tom is in his second year as the team leader, a previous synchro leader from 2017, a former Hawk qualified flying instructor, anti-carno flying instructor and typhoon operational pilot. As the smoke comes on, Reds 2, 3 and 4 move their way to the rear of the formation, forming our first big wing shape. Obviously, Red 5 would normally be on the left-hand side in the first of our space theme shapes. Cheers, you get your cameras ready for the shuttle roll. As the team roll to the left on the right hand side, closest in is Red 2, Flight Lieutenant Stu Roberts. He's in his first year on the team, a previous Typhoon pilot with 11 and 12 squadrons at Royal Air Force Coningsby in Lincolnshire. His opposite number on the left hand side is Red 3, Flight Lieutenant Patrick Kershaw, known as Paddy. He is a former Tornado GR4 pilot and has also flown the Typhoon with 11 and 12 squadrons at Royal Air Force Coningsby in Lincolnshire. Yeah, so um, well, we've got You'll see Red 4 move up alongside Reds 2 and 3 to sit behind Red 6. The Red Arrows are based at Royal Air Force Scampton. Scampton was, of course, the famous base for the World War II, the Dambuster Squadron. Unfortunately, Scampton will close at the end of this year and the Red Arrows will move to RAF Waddington, just to the south of Lincoln. In tribute to the station is personnel, and now that the F-35 is flown by 617, this is the lightning loop. Once again, the team reaching a height of over 5,500 feet and slowing down to approximately 150 miles per hour, which makes the aircraft controls a little bit less responsive. And of course, that makes station keeping and formation keeping even more difficult for the pilots. As they come back down, the speed will be increasing to 200, 300 and eventually 400 miles per hour as Red One bends the formation around to the left. As they come through the present, Red 4 on the far right hand side, uppermost as we look at it, is squad leader John Bond, known as Bondy. He is in his fifth year on the team, a former Typhoon pilot, a former Synchro leader from last year, and a former qualified flying instructor on the Takano, where he was the Takano display pilot in 2012. We are, of course, a military unit, and as such, we are commanded by Wing Commander David Montenegro, a former team and synchro leader, a former Tornado F3 pilot and qualified flying instructor on the Hawk T Mark I and Takano. You can see the formation now with Reds 2, 3 and 4 to sit behind Red 1. Red 7 moves to the left and Red 6 moves to the right, putting all the even numbers on the right-hand side and all the odd numbers on the left. Also, while Red One bends the formation around to the right at 3G, making the move even more difficult. But again, Jersey, get your cameras ready for the Phoenix roll. As the team roll, perfectly silhouetted against the sun, you can see the iconic shape of the Hawk aircraft. It has been in service with the Royal Air Force since 1976 and has been the aircraft of the Red Arrows since 1979 when it replaced the fallen Nat. Since the closure of 100 Squadron and 736 Royal Naval Air Squadron in March this year, 
That makes the Red Arrows the sole operator of the Hawk T Mark 1 in the United Kingdom. Once again, you'll see Red Fort make his way back to the rear of the formation. The Royal Air Force is constantly looking to adapt and develop its capabilities. And on the 1st of April 2021, UK Space Command was formed as the Royal Air Force acknowledges the importance of space in future operations. It's certainly in the air, land, maritime and cyber domains. As the team reverse to the left with a shape that would normally represent the lunar landing craft with five in the opposite place of four of those 1960s missions. This is Apollo. There are nine pilots on the squadron this year and all those pilots must have over 1,500 fast jet hours and be assessed as above average to join the team. To join the team, each pilot goes through a rigorous selection process where it is skimmed down to the final nine. They come to us and spend a week with us in our spring exercise, going through media interviews, formal interview, flying tests before the final three are selected. And those final three are the new pilots to start the season in around about October or November of this year. You can see now Red 4 sitting in on trail to the rest of the formation with 6 and 7 moved up alongside 2 and 3. In one of the crowd favourites of each display every year, representing, representing my former aircraft, which was on combat operations for nearly 40 years. Once again, Jersey, get your cameras ready for the colourful and dynamic tornado. The board call is made from Red 4 as Red 4 rolls around the rest of the formation. Watch for the colour change as Red 1 brings the formation to the right and now Red 4 smoking the blue. Two thousand and twenty two is an important year for the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth as Her Majesty the Queen celebrates seventy years on the throne and thereby making her the longest serving queen in history. You may have seen us over the Platinum Jubilee weekend, but once again you have the opportunity to see the Platinum Jubilee present. aircraft are flying with their air brakes out in that manoeuvre that allows the pilots to set a higher throttle setting and thereby this produces a hotter engine gas temperature which makes the colour in the dye burn a lot more brightly. As we come to the end of the first half you have seen formation flying involving six aircraft. Of course, formation flying is a core skill of all military pilots, but I think you'll agree that the Red Arrows take it to the next level with some fantastic formation shape changes and stunning aerobatics. As we go into the second half, you'll see the ship break down into two separate sections. You now have Reds 1 through 4. Normally there would be five, and therefore they are named Enid after Enid Blyton's famous five from the children's series book. And you have Red 6 and 7 currently in trail, known as the Synchro Pair, led by Red 6, the Synchro Leader. And it's their job to do the high speed, low, 
head-on opposition passes, which you will see in the second half, demonstrating the ability of the pilots and the agility of the Hawk aircraft. However, look directly to your front and you'll be able to see the aircraft smoking. Get your cameras ready for the detonator. As Red 6 and 7 break away from us, Red 6 on the left, smoking red, and Red 6 on the right, smoking blue. Each aircraft will now try to mirror each other for the following manoeuvre as they pull up using 30 degrees nose up to approximately 1,000 feet before they turn hard back towards the display line. They will dive down to 100 feet and have a closing speed of over 800 miles per hour to perform a series of barrel rolls in a manoeuvre we call the double roll. As the synchro pair leave the display area, look to your front right 45 and you'll see Enid formation coming back in with the white smoke on. The red and the blue come on as they perform a series of barrel rolls in the sky, leaving a snake-like smoke trail through the sky in a manoeuvre we like to call the Python. As I mentioned, there are nine pilots on the squadron. However, the Red Arrows is not just about the pilots. There are over 120 personnel on the squadron, with over 100 of them are support personnel, known as the Blues. And they are the engineers, the administrators, the operations and public relations staff who help keep the Red Arrows machine turning. With inside those Blues are 10 individuals known as the Circus, and they are the engineers fortunate to split fly in the back of our aircraft in between displays when we cannot take the full engineering complement. As Enid leave the display, keep looking to the left and looking to the right as you see Red 6 and 7 returning to the display line once again at that 100 feet and over 800 miles per hour closing speed. They will cross in the middle, performed by a, followed by a 360-degree aileron roll before again they simultaneously and try to mirror each other, pulling up to the first part of the manoeuvre called the boomerang. Each aircraft pulling up now at 5 to 6 G, which means everything about them is now weighing 5 to 6 times heavier than what you and I are as we stand on the seashore. Each aircraft now craft going inverted with 60 degrees nose down. Once again, heading back down to that 100 feet as they accelerate to through up to 500, 600, 700 and 800 miles per hour closure as they finish the boomerang. Keep looking to your left hand side and you'll see the Enid formation coming back in, smoking right across the top of the Radisson Hotel. The red comes on as reds two and three barrel roll to the outside with red two barreling over the top of red four. The blue comes on as red four barrel rolls to the right over the top of red two. In one of the hardest manoeuvres for our new pilots each year to master, this is rollbacks. Yeah. 
Keep looking to your left, right hand side, and you can see the synchro pair running back in again with six leading red seven back to the display line. The smoke comes on. Red six rolls inverted. And red seven flies the red, white, and blues. He rolls around the smoke of red six. Red seven is Flight Lieutenant James Turner, known as JT. He's in his third year on the team, a former Typhoon pilot and former qualified flying instructor on the Hawk T Mark 1. Keep your eyes on the synchro pair as they turn hard to the right. Turning hard back towards the display area, leading them is Red 6 squad leader Gregor Oxton. He's in his fourth year on the team, a former Typhoon and Harrier pilot, and was also a qualified flying instructor on the Hawk T Mark 2. The blue smoke comes on as the synchro pair turn to the left and look to your front right 45 and you'll see the Enid formation once again. They will perform an inverted V as Red 6 lines the synchro pair up with Enid for the colourful double goose. Red 1 bringing the formation around to white. Red 1 is today in an aircraft called a non-smoker. That means there is no smoke pod fitted. However, the other aircraft are fitted with a smoke pod, which allows the aircraft to produce five minutes of white smoke, one minute of red smoke, and one minute of blue smoke. And each color is identified and selected by an individual button on the pilot's control column. And each display is carefully choreographed to ensure that we have the right color smoke at the right time in the display. However, oh, keep looking directly to your front and you can see the synchro pair returning back towards us. Red 6 leading Red 7. They start their pull up, but Jersey, get your cameras ready. You do not want to miss this one. This is the synchro heart. As the synchro pair produce their heart, the Red Arrows would like to thank all our friends, families, wives and partners, some of which are here today with us, for all their support all through this, the air show season, because without that we would not be able to do what we do. And Jersey, give the synchro pair a massive round of applause for a fantastic heart in the sky of Jersey. As the synchro pair set up for their final pass, once again at that 100 feet and over 800 miles closure with a series of double rolls and inverted flying with a manoeuvre named by a viewer of the one show, this is Crossbow. As the synchro pair once again leave the display area, look directly to your front and you can see Enid returning back to the display line. Jersey, please put your hands together for the 2022 Royal Air Force Arabat team, the Red Arrows! Red, one put, uh, red 2 putting out the smoke there, gathering the rest of the formation to allow Red 1 to get the formation back together to return back to Jersey Airport. As I said earlier, it's an absolute honour and a privilege for the Red Arrows to once again return to Jersey and display for you today.
if you'd like any more information about the Red Arrows, of course we are on the internet. If you'd like any more information about the Red Arrows, we are of course on the internet, raf.mod.uk forward slash Red Arrows. We're also on Facebook, RAF Red Arrows, and Instagram and Twitter at RAF Red Arrows also, with each pilot also having their own account. As I said earlier, it's absolutely fantastic to play for you here. We want to thank you for coming out today. We're glad that the weather has held out today. Please take care when you're driving home. If you'd like, it's, just come and say hello. I will be at the Red Arrows PR tent in about five minutes time. I'll also be selling some of the uh, Red Arrows prints, which have a picture of the aircraft on. It's all been signed by all nine pilots and it also has the Platinum Jubilee seal on. Uh, it'll be cash only, I'm afraid. I don't have a car machine. But once again, on behalf of the Royal Air Force and the Red Arrows, thanks for coming to say hello. I hope to see you again soon in the future. Goodbye. Well, a superb display from the Red Arrows there. Down to six, but lovely conditions. Thank you so much for tuning in to this live broadcast from Jersey. I promised you an offer code to sign up on watch.planestv.com. That offer code is the word Jersey with a capital J. So if you head over to watch.planestv.com, can sign up to our subscription service and um, that will give you access give you access to the live broadcast from Duxford this weekend expecting 22 Spitfires and lots of hurricanes the Czech Air Force with the hip and hind so very excited to bring you that on the streaming service at watch.planesdb.com and because you all liked the broadcast over 500 of you give it a like on YouTube I've created that coupon code so that will give you 20% off the first three month subscription on the on-demand service so it's normally 10 pounds for eight quid you can fill your weekend full of spitfires and hurricanes sounds like a good deal to me or i hope it does anyway for those of you that haven't subscribed already i hope that uh, might bring you some enjoyment over the weekend right i'll bring you back to the air show commentators because i'm sure they're going to sign off and say goodbye jiggling around with a running order yeah yeah that can't be said enough Murray this has been a, a, a challenging display from a weather perspective even though we've enjoyed bright sometimes blazingly hot sunshine here uh, around the bay today it has not been like that around the UK it wasn't like that in the run-up to the show so for us to be able to put on a really good flying display of the type we've done today is a tribute to the organizers and the participants and thank you so much to all of you for coming it's always a great pleasure for me to come to uh, Jersey every year and long may it continue long may it continue indeed next year if not before Ben Donnells, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. With some other thank yous to do as well, our, our friends at uh, Planes.TV as well, they've been doing some great work and people have been watching what's been going on there and that's been magnificent and people watching oh, in far flung places like Spain and California and Sweden and Derby and such places. <laughs> I mean, that's as far flung as you can get, Derby. I've been there. Uh, so uh, our thanks very much to Planes.TV. Uh, thank you to Matt and JP and Mel, who has started off uh, a new thing, which is hashtag dogs at air display uh, which, which is now a thing it's now a trend uh, so dogs air display we've got plenty of photos there liberation radio uh, we are a 24 7 station which you'll find at liberationradio.co.uk you'll find it uh, on our app you can download the liberation radio app at your friendly app store and then you can choose between gold classics or hits and the music is exactly what you think it might be as well. So uh, we de we're delighted for you when you get back to your car, as you are doing now, to get your phone, get Liberation Radio on, and follow us for the after show party because we've got some tunes coming up very shortly.
sakes, good afternoon. Thank you for sticking with us today. Bit of a changing situation as Ben and Murray sum summarised up there. Just wanted to pop on and say a big thank you to everyone for tuning in. If you've stuck around for the last five minutes while we've been faffing about trying to get a camera working, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. It's really nice to see so many of you. And I, I, it takes some patience, doesn't it, with air shows sometimes when the weather's been as it has. A little bit changeable. Lost, oh, poor show, hey? You need that three hours of decent weather, or in actual fact, 24 hours of decent weather to get aircraft where they need to be and didn't happen for very many of our participants but the ones that we did see I, I was really enjoyed the Corsair fabulous red arrows display despite it being just six some nice conditions contributing to that hope you enjoyed it thanks for all of those that you've have joined the chat and I've seen a couple of people use that coupon code so we got to 500 likes I promised the coupon code for a subscription service so I've given it its jersey so if you head to watch.planestv.com, there's a link in the description to that. You can sign up to our streaming server, so that's got our back catalogue of, of uh, content stretching about 30 years. Not all of it, we're working on it, but also you'll be able to access this weekend's live broadcast from Duxford there. I'll give a big thank you to Mike, who organises this Jer the Jersey Air Show, for having us over. It's been a real privilege to cover the event again. So a big thank you, Mike, if you're watching this at home with your feet up, having a... I mean, got a, done a decent, done a good job in challenging situation, and lots of people saying, uh, "Well done!" and I "Love this show." Yeah, it was a fabulous show despite the challenges. Seeing who else is in the chat. Just saying, great work and well done. And and Tom, I like that. Tom saying, "Cheers for the friendly chat, everyone." Yes, I'm really proud of. <laughs> the folk that we bring together in the in the chat it's lovely to see so many of you and um, uh, people making friends gosh i'm getting splashed here it's getting serious might have to put some cameras away before they get drenched right uh, just a reminder then that we'll be live broadcasting at duxford over the weekend and if you'd like to watch that it's at watch.planestv.com and use the coupon code jersey with a capital j and that will give you 20 percent off your first three months on the service. Why staying sub subscribed? We will be bringing some more um, content to the service over the, uh, the autumn months. So a bit, bit more from Air Tattoo and um, we might do a little bit more as well. I, I won't say too much because uh, we've got lots of plans but it's very challenging uh, getting cracking on with editing work whilst during the busy season. So hopefully now things are calming down. Um, got a couple of people interested in helping out with some editing so um, hopefully bring a few uh, more refined productions to that service so the link again is in the description watch.planestv.com use the offer code jersey to get 20% off your first three months right a big Cap thank you again for tuning capital in J. capital J yep capital J on that jersey coupon code thank you everybody thanks for tuning in and we'll see you those of you that do tune in at Duxford on Saturday, hopefully. See you there. Cheers. Bye-bye.